The following Toku podcast to contain spoilers from both past and present Tokusatsu, anime, manga, movies and other related media. If you do not wish to be spoiled we suggest turning off the podcast now. Otherwise please enjoy the show. Hello everybody, welcome to the Tokusatsu podcast, the best show about Tokusatsu you probably never heard of. My name's AJ, that's Jay! Uh, I got put on, he did, 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 did. I don't have a joke prepared, so uh, that's my joke, is me fucking Do you remember that joke. time that Miles Morales ripped off the CW Flash? Uh, which time? Because he's ripping off everybody else all the time anyways. Uh, right, uh, literally the image I saw today where he's using lightning swords. Oh, fuck off. Ugh. Did you not see that? No, I didn't see that Look, yet. Look in grab bag, look at grab bag all in right, the server. Right, hold on. This is, this, is a li- this is a live, unscripted reaction. <laughs> what the fuck is this dumb shit? <laughs> Oy. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> why, why do they keep ruining Spider-Man bros? Why does why does everything spider related keep sucking why does so he much have a shit? Sword? Where does that come from? I don't like. What the fuck? <laughs> How does he make a sword? He's a spider person. But I, he has electricity powers. Yeah, like fucking spiders have electricity powers and swords. <laughs> you know what? You know what? At least with the Flash, it's dumb as fuck. But there is some, some minuscule way at, you can make sense of that. At least with the Flash, there's always the excuse of it's the speed force who fucking cares if it makes sense? <laughs> this, you the didn't rule- know radioactive spider blood makes you do this? <laughs> uh, I, hate I hate Miles. I hate comic books again. <laughs> but don't worry. We're going to have uh, the Platinum Goblin. And it's going to be played by Barry Osborne. And, uh, and then uh, Len <laughs> Stacy... <laughs> it's going to be revived by uh, the Grekel. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, oh, hold on, hold on. I need to copyright the Grekel. That's, that's a fucking great villain name. <laughs> and then 10 Riley. It's going to come from 2098 before <laughs> N- Nigel McGillicuddy was born. <laughs> worst part is that half of these could be valid spider person names and i wouldn't even know the worst part is that i probably wrote most of spider-man's next three year run uh <laughs> just right now it would probably be better than spider-man is right now honestly bunch of fucking hacks bro who's writing spider-man right now anyways uh allegedly zeb wells but everybody knows that's basically being puppeted by the editor who fucking hates spider-man for some reason what did Spider-Man do to deserve this, dude? He was popular. You know what? You're right. Fuck you, Tom Holland. It's your fault. You British prick. Fuck you, <coughs> Anyways. Fuck you J. Michael Straczynski. You ruined Spider-Man forever. No, no. He's the greatest writer of Spider-Man ever. The YouTube told me so. No, who's fucking telling you that in 2023? Uh, There was actually that one Ultimate Spider-Man video that was going around for a while. Ugh. Ultimate he didn't even do Ultimate Spider-Man. That was Bendis. No, wait. Wait, no. Who was... Who was uh, it's, they were talking about Straczynski. Who the fuck... What What run was that? It wasn't Ultimate. It was... It, I, I just remember because... He was on the main book was, at that time. He was, was the he? mother... He was the motherfucker with, with the, the spider totems and the fucking... Gwen Stacy getting cocked in one more day. That was all his shit. That was all him. <laughs> but, but he's the greatest Spider-Man writer ever. They told me so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about things that are making me mad. You, you're, you're the you're the comic guy. You gotta tell everyone why he's shit now. You have to make an entire video about why he's shit. All I have to do is say one more day and fucking end the video. <laughs> no, but it wasn't his fault. It was Alfred Molina. Where the fuck is he? Yeah, it was the guy who played Doc Ock's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he came into the editing room. He's like, Nah, fam, this is shit. <laughs> Rewrite it. <laughs> 
uh, you I'm know on what? You would probably to... be a better writer than half the fucking staff at Marvel right now. <laughs> uh, so we literally spent five minutes talking about stupid shit. Let's talk. Let's do it for the next hour. Uh, Jay, what are we talking? Hour about? is being very generous. Um, so we are talking about a show that I am <laughs> very, very glad we finally got to watch. Uh, Keitai Sosakan 7, or Keitai Investigator 7, or Cell Phone Investigator 7, or however the fuck you want to translate Or Existential Crisis 7. Yeah, that's also valid. Um, a, ver- a very bizarre little show, just from the outs- offset. So, <coughs> the the quick synopsis of the plot is that... It focuses on a secret organization called Under Anchor, which is an offshoot of a tech company called Anchor, who do uh, phone stuff, I guess. They never really say what the hell Anchor I, does. I kind of assumed that they were a robotics company. Because well, of, yeah, but like, like they make cell phones and shit. So like, oh, I'm, yeah, I guess I so. guess they're just Verizon. Which I guess would explain, you know what? If yeah, Verizon's a valid. Uh, I mean, the, the main villain of this show. Clo- I was gonna say the main villain of this show is basically just Steve Jobs. It's true. <laughs> I mean, considering how many global crises they fucking cause on a weekly basis, yeah, they probably are Verizon. Uh, anyways, true. so they are a s- technically vigilante group of. They're they're basically the cyber police. They go out and hunt down rogue hackers or people who are using technology and the internet and such and such forth for They're bully hunters, basically for for villainous re- motives, which can range from anything from scamming people to mass murder to just being kind of meanies on the internet. Uh, and the plot gets kicked off when our protagonist. Uh, Keita Amashita, a shiftless loser nerd who's quit society in general, finds himself inadvertently tied into the organization as an agent when his buffoonery causes the death of a currently established agent, uh, and he takes on his position as a sort of, I don't want to say payment, tribute, uh, he feels guilty and he takes his spot as an agent. It's like it's like a debt, a personal Basic, debt. He, a, a debt is a good way, yes. Uh, and the central gimmick of the show is that the anchor agents use the phone bravers, sentient robot telephones that can immediately wirelessly interface with any and all computer system, which they use to fight the evil hackers for justice. Um. If that sounds incoherent, that's because this show is incoherent, but it's the good kind of incoherent. So, uh, <laughs> where, the, where the fuck do we... Actually, you know what, yeah, I I should say this to, to start, is that I've been dying to watch this show for fucking years now, way before you even... Even we started, I started on the show here, is I heard about this show, like, ten fucking years ago when I was, like really getting into heavy tokusatsu stuff that wasn't like again power rangers shit basically when i was like when i when i like at last i truly see i had that moment where i felt like i realized the 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 wide world of this shit yeah, yeah, yeah. uh and i found out about the show from and I, I kind of feel like a fucking idiot for bringing this up i found it out from a god hand comic at it uh, which side note for those of you who are not familiar with those are um, it was a series of four panel comics largely a clone edit you know the usual kind of somebody makes a template and then you just fill in the rest kind of comics uh, based on the infamous video game God Hand which of course as we all know was critically panned but was fucking amazing uh, so there was an, an infamous comic around when the game came out which just like Oh, uh, this game kind of looks like shit. I wonder what it is. Oh my god, this game is fucking great. It, it just just Google God Hand Edit. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, but somebody made an edit of that comic based on this show, and immediately I'm like, I need to see this show. And before you ask AJ, 
I looked for it. I could not find it again. I looked everywhere I could. I could not find that comic. I am so mad. <laughs> but I mean, look, like you, you have been kind of uh, you've been kind of pushing this show for a while, and like we were almost going to do it once, but it was during that. I don't I don't remember why, but for some reason I distinctly remember this show having about like fifty two episodes. I just I don't know why, but I distinctly remember it having fifty two episodes, and I was just like, "Nah, fuck that!" at the time because I think we had just done, I think we had just done Go Sage, and I was like, "I'm not in for another fucking fifty yeah it marathon. was I actually I think we brought I don't know if you cut it, but I remember it was we had fucking watched something and it was fucking miserable, and I want to say it was probably around the time we did no I think it was a little earlier before. The Kyoryuger go uh, go Sager and whatever the hell came after that oh my God. of pain that we had. <laughs> but it was around that time where like we had just gotten something that was so fucking miserable, we just did not want to watch anything that long again. And then like you spun it, it was like, oh, I don't want to do this this is long. And then you fucking spun it again, and then you did it again. I'm like, and you like it was like, well, do you really want to watch? You and then you say the name. I'm like, yes, I want to fucking watch that. Show is great. <laughs> And then, of course, we watched, like, Gosager or something instead. and We watched Bo- Kyoryuger and Gosager back to fucking back. <laughs> yes, we did. What and the th- fuck was that, bro? That was that was us fucking learning that we shouldn't jinx anything. <laughs> uh, but no. So, that just kind of sets up our journey into getting into this show. Just from, like, the outset, this show is just... It's fucking... It's a cavalcade of just the weirdest shit put together to make a production. Every single like facet of this show on like the the higher up decision scale is just like you know this is going to be completely incomprehensible. <laughs> so to start, this is a show co-produced by Japanese toy company Wiz, uh, who if you're not familiar created Tamagotchis. Uh, and it is- I always thought it was kind of weird when I looked up because I actually did look up the toys for this. Which, by the way, they're actually not as expensive as they're expected. Um, no, I actually they're, did look they're up the to- reasonably priced if you can fucking find them. Oh, you can find them on eBay easy. Um, I was gonna say like it was. Yeah, I did find it kind of funny how every time I looked up the Keitai toys, Tamagotchis always came to fuck up. Mm. Always. <laughs> so, the show is co-produced. By Production IG, a primarily animation studio who are basically everything they've done is, I don't want to say like high concept, but it's a lot of very surrealist, multi-layered sci-fi kind of stuff. Like they do, soup. They, just to name a few shows they've done, uh, they did Ghost in the Shell, Psycho Pass, oh. Oh my uh, God. Eden of the East... Yeah. Uh, the completely schizophrenic Brave Rydeen reboot from the mid 2000s. Uh, and in terms of just like kind of offhand work, they did the animation for, was it Xeno Gears or Xeno Saga? The one on the PlayStation 1. And I forget what else. They did another game. But yeah, just naming those shows right there off the top of my head. Their, their entire catalog is just completely insane shit like this. So who do they get to direct this show? Uh, but none other than infamous filmmaker Takashi Miike, uh, who is known for a lot of, again, I don't want to say high concept, but a lot of very surreal, very... <sighs> this is this is not entirely accurate, but like he's the Japanese... He's like a hybrid of Robert Rodriguez and David Lynch in terms of his movies. He He's not like... He's not... I, I, I was going to say he's not like super high concept, but you do have to have a brainstem to know what's going exactly. on. Exactly. Like, his movies are... They're not quite super, like, surreal and artsy like David Lynch, but they're not quite nearly as, like, completely over-the-top, balls-to-the-wall action, like insanity like Robert Rodriguez it's he's like he's kind of like right there in the middle so again <laughs> just to name a few things he's done off the top of my head uh of course his most famous one Ichi the Killer 
Uh, oh, he did that movie shit. Audition, which if you've never seen is fucking terrifying. Um, <laughs> he did, did a movie that. recently that was called, I think it was like Yakuza versus Vampire or something. But I, remember I it, heard about that. It was really big when it came out. I'm still mad I never got to see it. And um, for some reason, he did the Ace Attorney movie, uh, which I'm not going to lie. This show has a lot of uh, aesthetic similarities to the Ace Attorney movie. Oh, it does. Honestly, some of the some of the the soundtrack I was just like, this sounds like they want to rip off Ace Attorney so bad, but they can't. Like, for those of you who have never seen the Ace Attorney movies, it is almost nothing like the games, and also it is a perfect adaptation of the games because like <laughs> the plot and the characters and the direction are all the same, but it's like this bizarre like borderline steampunk schizo tech kind of shit where it's like super highly advanced technology and all this weird like borderline pseudo future stuff it's it's insane it is the most insane movie you'll ever see but and then back again like the the main screenwriter of the show is Tomo- tomioka atsuhiro who is probably the lowest like the closest to normal on this list of uh, the production team. Uh, he is a very prolific writer, but most of his stuff is stuff you have either never heard of or it's all actually, no, you've probably heard of a lot of his stuff, but like everything he's done is more or less just an adaptation of another medium. Mm. So like, er, like he's been the lead director of shows from like the er, lead writer of shows from like, the nineties and he's still working, but like everything he's done is either like based on another I- IP or like an adaptation of an, uh, of a manga. Like yeah. again, off the top of my head, uh, he did the chrono crusade anime. Uh, he was the head writer on the Pokemon anime during diamond and pearl and a little bit of <sighs> black and white was it black and fuck. white or X and Y one of those. No, it was but black yeah, and white. Yeah. But he was the, the head writer on Pokemon during the diamond and pearl era, uh, which, says a lot and the closest thing he has to like an original story was that final fantasy anime from the early 2000s that like five people watched and oh are you talking about fucking uh spirits within no 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 not that one the uh the 2d one uh unlimited the, oh the, my fucking god yeah you know the the one with the dude with the magic gun and absolutely nothing else worth talking about in that show. What the fuck, dude? Oh my god, that now that right there is uh, that's a deep cut. <laughs> oh oh yeah, so so you look at that kind of roster there and you're like, this is going to be completely insane and incomprehensible, and it is. But it's the and then good you look cut. at the cast, and then you look at the cast, which is like. I guess that's probably a a good way to segue into talking about the characters. Like almost every single major character in this show, actually almost every character in general in this show, be it a main character or like a villain of the week is a, is a tokusatsu actor you've seen in something else. Yeah. So just going through the main cast and, uh, do you want do you want me to just list through the the actors now or do you want me to do it as we get uh, to the you know what we'll we'll do, we'll do uh we'll do it this way we'll do it how we usually do where we talk about the characters right. um but we'll talk about like who they are as well okay so immediately off the top we have our hero Keita who is who is the kid from the uh, the main kid from Dogu Chan I'm shocked uh, he's uh, like I I oh wow holy shit it's so fucking funny because. For starters, he's way better in this show, mostly because it's a way better script and directors. Um, but also, like, he's basically playing the same character in this. Oh, dude, don't even get me started. Like, that's probably, right off the bat, that's probably one of the only things I did not like about him was the constant hyperventilating. I'm like, kid, <laughs> away from the microphone. You look, don't he, need to do this. Look, he has asthma. He can't control it. <laughs> yes, he can. He's faking it. Uh, <laughs> that is that is offensive and asthmaphobic, AJ. Good. I'm glad. It doesn't matter anyways. He kind of looks like... Uh, nowadays, he looks like the, the chin guy from Amazon's without the chin. Yeah, you're right. Right? Uh, it's but weird. I actually know that... I think he probably might be one of the only uh, actors in this show that's, like, big, big now. 
I mean, like, that, can... that comes to mind. Yeah, he's definitely, like, the biggest actor who isn't, again, like, a veteran tokusatsu actor. Which is good. What I mean, fuck? no, he's... Like I said, he's definitely way better in this show. Uh, one, because he's given way more time to actually, like, develop his acting. and his... Actually, was this... I think this, this is was... before. This was before Doguchan, which is weird. But I think, uh, that... I, think, I think that just goes to show what happens when you get a good actor and you give him awful shit to do. <laughs> that is true. But no, um, I did just kind of say it there. He's basically the same character initially where he's like, He's a shiftless loser who fucking lounges around and just doesn't give a shit about anything. Like, he's not a neat because he's still in high school, but like, he's. He literally, the first episode is him, like, trying to run away to the mountains with his friend because he just doesn't fucking care about being in school or his family or getting a job or growing up or anything. That is literally the first episode of the show is the main character running away from home because he just doesn't care anymore and it's that kind of sets up his whole character especially like a little bit more later on kind of but even early on where like he just kind of couldn't give less of a shit even though he wants to be here he wants to be a part of under anchor he's just like he almost feels like it's a burden to him that he has to show up and do this stuff even though he's del he is he's the one putting himself into these situations willingly mm -hmm. Like he's constantly mo like he's moping around, not in like uh, wah, uh my life sucks, but in just like a uh, fucking whatever, dude. Like he even the like even his like even the phone himself is just like, bro, shut the fuck up. God yeah. damn. Yes, yeah, seven at multiple points has to tell him to just like suck it the fuck up, dude. Act like a f stop acting like you're a child. You you're are, getting paid. You are you are getting paid to be here. Act like an adult. Act become an adult already just Basically. just stop being a child <laughs> it, it's weird too because like at the start honestly jay at the start i thought i was gonna fucking hate this kid i was like oh here we fucking go like i thought he, it was gonna be one of those shows where it's like i hate the main character but everyone else is good but like after a while i was just like you know what i, I kind of like this guy he's He's obviously growing up, and it obviously shows very well. It's one of those subtle kind of shows where it's like mm. his growth <laughs> comes. I know not That's... much in the show is subtle. Not no, much in I, the show I, is subtle. I understand what you meant by that. Yeah, but like, um, like by the end of the episode or by the end of the show, it's like I can still see parts of who he used to be, but he's definitely not the same kid we started with, and I oh, like yeah. that. Yeah, no, I really do like the. Um... Honestly, I kind of expected that general growth was going to happen to him. So, like, I didn't have nearly as visceral as reaction as you did at first. But at the same time, have like PTSD over Dogochan. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a that's a good way to uh, sort of summarize his growth. Is that he starts off it. It's very much a coming of age thing where he he learns to he, he matures slowly throughout the show, and it's a very noticeable growth. Where you compare from, like, episode one to later on, where, like, up until, like, the final arc and outside of, uh, the midway point, nobody ever really addresses it or, like, brings it up at a point that's, uh, like, ham-fisted. Like, like it's not shoving it in your face. He's, see, guys, he's different. He's different no, now. Like, like, the show itself will show you, show him growing, and he'll, you can notice him, his growth, and it'll be, like, Six or seven episodes after that growth has kind of set in, will, where somebody will comment on it in a way. That I, I think means. it's, I think it's because the show is written in a way where it's just like, the show's written in a way where it's like, we know you're not stupid. You can notice it too. We don't need to tell you. Mm. Like we don't need to. T like that's 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 something I noticed about the show a lot, is that it really does feel like we don't need to tell you. You can see what's happening. Like we don't need to explain this if you can understand what's going on. And I exactly. like that. I, I like it when shows do that where like they're obviously treating it to audience that's like you're not you're you're not idiots. You know what's going on. Yeah, uh, oh absolutely. <laughs> um that's and that's kinda that kinda says the same for a lot of the cast too. With some minor exceptions here or there. Oh, cool. <laughs> Not even who I was thinking about, but you're right. <laughs> the The show is very good at being 
weirdly subtle with the way the characters develop and the way they they grow overall in the show and i do like that i do really like that and it's noticeable too even with like the way seven uh the main cell phone braver dude i forgot their names for a second brain uh (laughs) the way his relationship grows and just his personality in general grows with kata where at the start he's very much like he's a little too robotic at points where they kind of flip flop in the earlier episodes, like how robotic he is or like how kind of developed as like an AI he is. Or like in the first episode when he's hanging out with his uh, previous partner, you kind of get the feeling that he's, he's got a bit of a personality and he's kind of got his own defined relationship. But then once he switches over to working with Kata, he just kind of becomes a robot for the first couple of episodes. You, you could argue that, and, and this is actually a thing in the show, that like because he's now with someone new and he's been with his partner for his, his old partner, which we'll get to, he's been with him for a while. He's he needs to get used to Kata, and it's to the point where you can even in his speech patterns, he goes from like sounding like a robot to towards the end. No, he still has that obviously, but he sounds like a person talking now, like a just a normal ass person talking. Like yeah, he's no. learned that much, and I really really like again. Not a lot in this show is subtle, and that is one of those things that's like, it's so subtle you might not even notice it until someone points it out, and I really like it. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. I'm, I'm more talking like, it's inconsistent how much he's reset from episode to episode early on, is more mm. what I mean. But that that way he grows and that his own character develops, both alongside Kata and personally, is really good. Like, I like... um. Like, he, Kata finally kind of stops being a mopey little shit delinquent, and he finally starts taking his role a little more seriously. And, like, two or three episodes after that kind of switch happens is finally when he's, like, Seven finally acknowledges him as his new partner, more or less. And then that's that's kind of how their relationship starts to develop. And I, for that part, too, I like, I like how Seven, for the most part, never really changes the way he acts based on the way Kata acts. Where, like... They will both develop, but they won't change the way they react to better fit the other person. They still stay, relatively speaking, opposites. And I do like that as well, where, like, like none of... Like, Kata ribs off on Seven in just the right ways, where <coughs> Seven still reacts the same way he does, but he, he, he plays better with Kata's buffoonery, but not to the point where he just becomes Kata again. Yeah, actually, that, that kind of comes up to a really good point that like it comes to a point in the final arc where like gene basically missed the idea like like magda basically missed the idea of what of seven was to begin with Mm. i actually kind of like that because you know genes basically became like just a copy of their owners where seven is like well no he's just a friend now he has his own personality his own subconscious at a certain point and it becomes a legit little friendship and I, i honestly thought their friendship was Kind of adorable towards the end. I was like, you know what? I, I like these two. No, they, they, they were, make a good combination. Their relationship was great. It was a pretty, st- you know, I don't want to say standard, but it was a, your general buddy cop formula is what it was. And the, I like, mean, you can they're make, literally you can called make, buddies. Well, I mean, literally. You can make that formula work in fucking any scenario you can think of. It's, it is almost foolproof making that scenario work. And to their credit, they do it really well, and it never really feels cliche or... Like, it's been done before. Even though, for the most part, like, the standard... Well, I don't want to say a lot of the standard plots have been done before, because most of those are completely fucking bonkers, but you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Some yeah, yeah. Certain beats and certain character arcs within specific episodes have been done before, but they never feel like they've been done before. Yeah, it does it in a way where... You know, I guess you could say it's like making it's like making a dish everyone's made, but adding your own little flair to it, and that's what they mm. do with this with this uh, with this particular relationship. Where, yeah, we've seen this kind of relationship technically with a lot of fucking things, but they do it pretty well in this. Where you really do like their developing relationship. I mean, shit. At a certain point, they really do start saying like, "Oh, because of Kata, Seven has learned so much that he's basically become a human in, in some ways." Mm. Yeah, and that that also sets up Seven's arc in the finale. But we'll we'll say that more for once we kind of get through everybody else because the the finale is a bit of a gauntlet to go through. So should we talk about Common Rider Knight? 
<laughs> so let's let's talk about Ren, aka Common Rider Knight, who is just in this show completely, complete with the same actor under a different name. Bro, um, I'm not even gonna lie, I totally fucking forgot you mentioned he was in this. And when I was, saw him, I was like, holy fuck, what? I know, um, I don't remember if it was Knight's actor or a different Ryuki actor, but Chad brought it up when we landed on the show on the wheel and we were doing a little, like, our, our little first impressions kind of thing. And, like... Oh, that was Raya. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right, Raya's in this show, too. So that's, uh, technically four Ryuki actors that are in this show. Uh, Ooh. so... One of them is only a, a one-off, so it doesn't really count. It's true. Uh, so the sort of, uh, not necessarily Deuteragonist, because he's not really like, he's just kind of there a lot of the times. So only a few episodes really focus on him. One Actually, the- it, 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 you, just before you go into him, it, Knight, I'm going to call him Knight, I'm sorry. Uh, he does bring up something that I do like about this show, and it's that uh, characters just kind of fuck off for no reason, but it's okay in this show. Like it feels natural for them to do that for you. Just don't yeah. see them for a while. I like, I like that. I kind of do like that. Yeah. Like w- they have their own agency, you know, I don't want to say age. They have their own agency. They have their own jobs to, you know, th- th- these guys are fucking working, you know, they've got other shit they've got to do at work. So it makes sense that everybody's not hanging around with the group at the same time, you know, like, I, you know, I've got paperwork to go file. I've got to go run errands. It's my day off. Of course, I'm not hanging around the secret base. I've got shit I got to do. Exactly. So it makes sense. Yeah. And I and I like that idea, especially with uh, Kirihara, where it's like, he's not there all the time. But when he's there, it's for some reason, the more they, they use him very sparingly. So when they use him, he actually does have mm. a point to prove with his, you know, with him being there. Except for... The lunch episode, but that we'll get to that one. <laughs> that episode was uh, that was the goofy episode. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> no, but um, but yeah, and uh, especially like uh, there's the arc early on where he gets uh, he gets put on suspension. So like, even when he pops up, he's not doing anything because he's not allowed to do anything, and and that works too. And uh, again, that also helps out Kata's character arc where like he he doesn't have a parachute here; he's flying solo. But uh. To actually talk about Kirihara, who is, I mean, we've already made the joke about ten times. He's literally just Common Rider Knight, complete with the same actor, and it, somehow he doesn't feel like he is literally just Knight, but he doesn't just feel like it is just I am ripping off Knight. I think it's just, I think it's the coincidence of the way his character is written and the fact that it's the same actor, is that it makes the the fact that he is basically just the same character more evident. So Kirihara <laughs> it's, it's is... even funnier because like it's even funnier because like nine times out of ten, I really did because again the way he plays him, I really did just expect him to pull out the fucking <laughs> deck and I was just like he's just gonna wreck some shit out of nowhere. <laughs> Because, <laughs> like, nine times out of ten, it, was just, it felt like I was just watching Ryuki again. He was just like, I'm just going to punch a motherfucker. <laughs> to be fair, that it. is how he solved most of his problems. Is punching this people. is true. <laughs> so, so Kirihara is, again, much like Knight. He is, uh, he's not quite a rival, but he's he's that dickhead side hero where he's, he's the more mature one. He's got the more experience. He's been with the organization longer than Keita, obviously, who's been there for, like, a week. So... There's a lot of... He's kind of a mentor in the sense that he helps teach Kata when he's still a newbie. And he kind of feels burdened by Kata, and he kind of hates that he's around. Because, of course, Kata's a fucking dipshit high schooler who doesn't know anything. And he's got no agency. So Kirihara has to pick up his slack. Um, But I, I really like that. It really works in this kind of lower... I don't want to say lower tier setting, but like the, where it's not like uh, again, where it's not like Ryuki, where it's a fucking battle game to the death, where it's just it's lower stakes, yeah, lower stakes, yeah, like, like we're secret agents basically. Like he's he's the the longer he's the more grizzled veteran agent, whereas <laughs> Kata is the fresh faced newbie. It's it's in you know they're they're trading uh, the Hunger Games for just spying on pole basically. It's true. Yeah. That's, that's basically that's, what that's, they do. It's pretty much. Actually, no, it'd be 2chan, I guess. It would be. What? Do they have a pool? I think they do. I'm pretty sure know. they do. They've got an I'm, equivalent. I'm pretty sure that's where Shinzo Abe got shot. 
Yes, the image board. He was shot while browsing an image board. He, he probably was. Honestly, he was like he was like posting sage and shit, and someone just fucking got rid of him because they're like, "Fuck you and your trip code." <laughs> <Dick>. <laughs> Goes in every field. Dubs, check him. <laughs> that is what the guy said when he pulled the trigger. Check these dubs. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, fucking hell. So I I do really like Kirihara. Um, he's, he's interesting where, again, despite being literally just knight, he doesn't quite feel super derivative in that way, like I already said. Um <laughs> He doesn't have a whole lot of impact in the overall story, largely because, again, he's just kind of, like, fucking off doing his own thing. It really isn't until, like, the near end where he... he They start building on his character more and that, like, that's how it starts influencing the greater plot. Like, I... Again... I mean, you could argue what greater plot until, like, episode 30. That's fair. Well, I mean, the first... Like, the first half there is kind of an overarching story arc, but... Sort of. Just a little bit. More so than the second half up until the finale arc. I mean, to be... F- I mean, that's not even me saying it as a bad thing. Like, this one, this is one of those shows that, like... It has a plot when it feels like it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really need one. Yeah. Uh, but K- Kirihara gets this uh, mini character arc near the end where... <laughs> the The way they phrase it is so fucking ridiculous, but... His family was killed by the internet. Uh, which, so, so that's kind of his whole thing is that uh, he he kind of hates the internet. He kind of hates technology, modern technology in a way. And the way kind of society is uh, evolving thanks to the internet. That's a big theme in the show is like the way technology is advancing and the way we as humanity kind of deal with it and it shapes ourselves. Oh, good God. And that's kind we'll of, again, that. that's like a lot of like the villain of the week type stuff is like, the way the internet has fucked us up mentally. Uh, we'll get in, to that. Well, we have to get to that. That's the entire final arc. Um, but Kirihara's whole thing early on is that, like, he kind of fucking hates everybody who uses the internet, just kind of in general. He kind of thinks it's an inherent evil. Uh, and they kind of don't really build on it up until near the end, where they find we find out that, again, his family was killed by the internet, uh, which they introduce... And then don't elaborate on for, like, eight episodes until they explain that, like, a vigilante serial killer something or other killed his family and he was the only survivor. And because he couldn't do shit to stop it, he kind of got super, you know, it's it's that character arc of blank killed my family. So now I am an enemy of blank. My family's dead. Literally. My family is dead. I am Batman, but with cell phones. I I mean, to be fair. The last time it was just his sister. Now it's his whole fucking family. <laughs> was it his sister or his girlfriend? Oh, it was his. Oh, that's right. It was his girlfriend. Yeah, it was his girl. Yeah, I was like, he I wasn't related still... to her. It's it's this account. I would hope not. I mean, <laughs> that would be the weirdest thing that happened in Ryuki. But look, look, Mori didn't write this one. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But uh, no, anyways. Uh, so that's kind of his whole arc throughout the show is that he sees the internet as kind of an inherent evil. And he thinks anybody who really, like, uses technology is kind of, like, an inherent evil. And I I do like that way that it kind of plays with Keita, who, you know, who's... He's a dipshit teenager who grew up on the internet, you know, like <laughs> us. And it's so weird when you think about it. Like, yeah. this is 2008. And they this were was... already talking about how the generation was fucked by the internet. Oh, absolutely! It's very ahead of its time in that way. Oh, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to Steve Jobs in a minute with his fucking final boss plan, with all of that bullshit. But it is it is very weird how like a lot of the themes of this show literally you could remake the show today and it just it just works. Oh, absolutely! All all you'd have to do is really uh, kind of like update the effects in some areas, and yeah. I mean you'd ha- you'd probably have to change the phones from uh, being old style flip phones to like smartphones, but. No, I mean, this is Japan. in Japan. I think those are still pretty popular in Japan, so you could probably get away with it as is. You yeah, could probably so work a thing of like, oh, they're just deliberately retro, you know, because it's, you know, it's not too weird. They're deliberately retro because they're spies. It's harder exactly. to track. Exactly. Oh. oh, we got a hook there. We got a hook for their, uh, the reboot. K-Tai 8. <laughs> there was kind of already an 8. That was the uh, the final boss. Uh, he was technically 5, though. Uh, it's splitting here. Oh, actually, real quick before we keep going for, with Kitahara, 
Uh, one thing about the Foam Bravers, and this can go into third as well. Uh, I absolutely love the effects on the Foam Bravers. Oh, I, yeah. The- I am surprised how good the fucking CG was on these motherfuckers. For it 2008, was, I'm for, surprised. For a 2008 TV show in Japan, the effects are still really hold up and are still really good. I mean, like, there are obviously your jank, your shots, like, when the camera is really shaking a lot or there's a lot of heavy movement, you can tell where, like, you can kind of tell where they fucked up the composite. But for the most part, like, no, like, they blend in fairly well. They they actually look and f- move pretty realistically for a, you know, walking cell phone. Uh, it, it does help that they uh, they uh, they kind of half and half it with CG and then just the actual toys. <laughs> yeah, I do like that where, like, uh, where it's like a still shot, you know, and they're not about to immediately transform. And even then sometimes, like... Oh, dude, lose... I mean, that, one of my favorite little points was uh, Zero One. Where he, like his toy is like moving the 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 window the curtain of the window. <laughs> I just love that. I don't know. It's just it is the actual fucking toy. It's just using the fucking I, window curtain. I loved it whenever they used the actual toys transformed, just like in place of the character models. Like there's a point where uh the big bad Magura he had like he's using zero one. Oh like, my headset. god! Like zero one's got his arms wrapped around his head. <laughs> Like he's clinging uh, on to him. That was the funniest shit, dude. It was I so goddamn stop funny. laughing. Actually, it's that's like, another thing too. Yeah, yeah. It's so good because like the entire <laughs> scene is completely serious, and at no point do they acknowledge the fact that Zero One is face hugging him. But it's like it's very obviously Zero One is holding on to him, just like <laughs> holding pressed up against life. his face. <laughs> exactly. I will say that's also that's also something that uh, to talk about the phone bravers real quick too. I do like how even though they are these high tech advanced spy phones with AI, they're still just janky walking basically toys in, in the universe. Mm. Where like they don't really have the gracefulness of human of humans. Like they'll still fall over. They'll still just bump into shit randomly. Like how many times did seven or zero one just fall? Like oh, they're a just, lot. They're they, just they... fucking. They're just fucking lamos. <laughs> They just ate shit a lot. And I like. <laughs> I especially like that with Zero One, where like he'll be trying to do like the cool, edgy, dramatic villain thing, where like he'll be doing like a cool pose, and he'll do like the dramatic entry through a window, or like he'll drop oh. down from something. But like he'll he'll totally botch the fall and eat <laughs> shit on the ground. Dude, my like, favorite one was the was I think the last one where he's gonna try and jump out the window and it was fucking closed. <laughs> yeah, he, he tries to. Uh, he's hanging out with uh, Kata, and he's like. He's like, I'm going to, he's like, he's doing his like, I'm a lone wolf thing. He's like, he goes to run off on his own to investigate something and he leaves fucking smacks into Kate as a window and he lands on his ass <laughs> and Kate just kind of like gently wo- like moves over and pushes the window up. It's like, let me get that for your bro. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, thanks. Yeah. I, I That is one thing about the show too. It's, it's the subtle comedy with some of that stuff where it's just mm. like, the, these are still just kind of awkward moving phones that don't really know how to use their bodies to their full potential. And it's just fucking funny when they eat shit. It's just the <laughs> funniest fucking thing. Oh like, yeah. There's a lot of physical comedy in this show with the phones. And I think again, to go back to the CG, it really does help because the CG, as we said for 2008 TV, it's pretty fucking impressive. Again, like Jay said, where there's, when they try and get a bit too cute with it, it does look kind of weird. I won't lie. It does yeah. get kind of weird. But for the most part, from like the day-to-day, episode-to-episode, I-, I like it. I actually really like it. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's still... A, the the effects in general, it's... It helps that uh, even though Mike only directed two episodes, it helps that because he is kind of the coordinator, it's all done a lot in his style, where it's a lot of like heavy industrial type stuff and it's a lot of very stylized stuff that looks like something that's real but isn't so a lot of the cg stuff it doesn't it's it's not too realistic where it becomes jarring but it's Mm. not wacky enough or surreal enough where it completely takes you out of the experience unless he's trying to be completely surreal near the end (laughs) to be fair that's that's an exception i oh dude that oh i'll get to that um Actually, so we, we kind of did talk a little bit more about... We actually I think we did finish about Kitahara. I think we can talk about third. Yeah, I didn't bit. really have anything else more to say about him until the end. Uh, brief thing on third. I love he's, him. 
third is great. He's basically like a he's kind of almost a stereotypical uh, salary man almost in the way he reacts. He's got he's a very soft spoken. He uses a lot of uh, polite terminology, and he kind of <laughs> he. I don't want to say he's he's, uh, he's Kirahara's tard wrangler, but he's that general kind of way of like. <laughs> He he's the one who has to apologize for Kirihara being like an edge lord, where he's just like, I I am so very sorry for Kirihara. Sorry, I, mean, I yeah. apologize. I, he, although he he does have one of my favorite moments of the series where he fucking snaps at him. Oh yeah, that was end, great. He finally just gets fed the hell up with Kirihara's shit. He's like, I am sick and fucking tired of dealing with your st- shit, Kirihara. You just you need to suck it the fuck up. And figure out your problems already. You are an adult. You've had this conversation ten times with with uh, I almost forgot his name, Amashita. You need you need to learn your own lesson. I love that. I love. Bit. And then I he love just that. immediately snaps back to normal like that happened. <laughs> but yeah, I love third. I love third. Um, besides another character that we'll get that uh, we'll talk about towards the ending. Uh. He's one of the only ones that actually made me misty-eyed when he fucking bit it, which was surprising that he bit it. I was like, "Oh, I fucking dead." I'm, I am definitely surprised how many characters actually die in this show. Just like characters that matter too. <laughs> Mike don't give a fuck. <sighs> mm, no. So, a uh, quick lightning round on the rest of the uh, anchor staff because, to be honest, like the rest of them don't really matter. Um, there is. Allegedly, the third braver agent, uh, Toko, who she is a horrible woman. She is a she is a rotten woman. Um, how does <laughs> this woman still have a job? She's an otaku whore. She is. She really is. Her. She honestly really. Uh, the show sets her up as being the third braver agent, even though yeah, I don't know if like. I don't know if I missed something, but like I swear to God, they just straight up retconned it. Where like they mention her picking up her braver that was getting maintenance, and then just later they're like, "Oh no, her braver is in the fucking coma, basically, and is locked away." Like Hannibal. They Lecter. did. <clears throat> they mentioned something about like, "Oh, her braver like on a mission got like kind of hurt, so it's like taking a little while to like uh, do maintenance on it." And I was like, "Oh, so it's gonna come in later?" Because they even tease it in the in the in the opening that cause it's right there. And I'm like, well, where did it go? It's just gone. Yeah. So I'm, I must've just completely like forgot that line and was just like, Oh yeah, she has it, but we just never see her use it because that's not what the writers want to do. No. Like uh, again, it feels like they just straight up retcon that they did. I'm so, pretty sure they did. So I kind of, we already, we already summarized it. She is like a, she is a weirdo, I don't want to say Yandere, but she's like a weirdo obsessive stalker who f- like obsessively fixates on men and then drives them into the brink of insanity and then fucking mopes around the office for a week and makes everybody else miserable because she's miserable and then repeats the cycle. She has like three or four episodes where they focus on her and every single plot is literally... Toko's new relationship of the week, and this is how it's causing problems for everyone else. Uh, I kind of, I liked her early on, and I liked her in smaller doses. But like, whenever she had a, like a major part in the show, she was, she oh, was super trust obnoxious. Trust me, it was bad. Like there was a couple times where I was like, I really wish I could skip this fucking episode. I hate this chick. Uh, so like her, her episodes are not very good at all. No, she's, she's good in smaller doses. But anything further than that, she just gets really annoying. Like, even then, like, she never fucking does anything. She's, like, she mostly just shows up to gossip and, like, shit talk the other agents and the support team. Because she's just, like, a fucking psycho bitch. It's I don't so even weird. really understand what her role is in the company outside of being a braver. Like, a braver buddy. I mean... I suppose, like Kirahara and Kata, she is allegedly a field agent, even though she doesn't have a braver. But and she I, never she, goes never, out on the field, really. We we never see her do anything at all. So I guess she just she's on perpetual paperwork duty. I suppose <laughs> that's the only thing I can assume. She's there. She's there she because 
Because Chigus is too fucking nice to fire. I don't know. It's probably the case. That woman put up with way too much bullshit throughout the season. She really fucking did. <laughs> oh, speaking I w- about her. I will say, like, the only time uh, her shenanigans really kind of, like, were moderately entertaining was uh, in one of the recap episodes where she breaks into Kata's house while shit-faced drunk to cry in his bathtub. And then, by pure coincidence, Kata's other two female friends show up, and of course it becomes super awkward because she's drunk off her ass and keeps saying embarrassing things. Uh, so, quick thing about uh, the boss, Chigasa, who used to be an agent, but now is the chief of the uh, the group. The chief. I... <laughs> She's a very, I don't want to say stock character, but, because again, that sounds mean. She's kind of your typical, like, well-meaning but stern boss character you see a lot in these kinds of, these kinds of shows where. Mm. I, I will say, though, um, I, and I wouldn't say it's mean to say it because she is very, she, she is very generic. She's a generic chief character, yeah. but that's, it's not a bad thing. She plays her role. I, no. to, to use a word that sounds worse than it is, she's very utilitarian in her role. She plays it well. She does what she needs to, and I don't think she needs anything more than that. Mm. Yeah, and uh, they do start building on her more as the series goes on, where they kind of set up a thing where, like, she she sees a lot in Kata, mostly due to his, her relationship with um, Kata's predecessor, Takamoto, and, like, her own experiences in the field and her kind of growing up as a rookie agent. And that's kind of why she keeps him around, but she also kind of knows where she needs to put her foot down and be the boss. And she's not afraid of being a little goofy, too, like everybody else. Which, I, again, she's a very utilitarian character, and that does sound mean. And I didn't, that's why I didn't want to say stock, because it sounds it sounds negative. But it's mm-hmm. it's really the best way to explain it, is you've yeah. seen this kind of character archetype before, and there isn't a whole lot that makes her different. But at the same time, that doesn't mean it's done badly. Yeah, and, and again, it's 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 very much. She she plays her role, and I don't. And honestly, I don't. I don't. Uh, she's she's all right. She's all right. She yeah. she. I kept thinking she was somebody else for like half of the series. Oh, don't be don't get me wrong. I keep mis- mixing up like half the support team. I liked the the flashback arc when they set up where they set up her role as like a before she was the chief with her agent and uh her own braver, who was. Horribly, violently murdered, um, which is not a sentence you would expect me to say about a talking cell phone. Uh, Oh, a lot of cell phones in this show get horribly, violently murdered somehow. Oh, yes. Um, I do like the way that kind of sets up, uh, again, that, that, that kind of illuminates her general character arc and the way she kind of reacts with Kata. And I do like that. I do really like that. And it's, it's a good, it builds a solid foundation to her. Mm. Uh, uh, George Carlin. <laughs> You're right. He, I'm. He literally looks like George fucking Carlin, like down to the hair. Uh, he's he's yeah. he's fine. He, I mean, he's pretty much the guy who made or half third made the Bravers. So one of the co-creators and sort of uh the main the main tech dude, and he's he's kind of your stock like grandpa character not like not like the bad kind of grandpa but like he's that kind of just he's a fun loving old man like they they keep calling him i i forget the exact translation but like they basically keep calling him like mr almost retired essentially is what yeah his name is. they they keep making the fun of the fact that he's old like playfully and i do like that and uh again he has a lot of crossover with kata and the way sort of his own experiences with literally building the Bravers and helping found under Anchor, the way it kind of plays off with the way Kata's own growth goes and his own, his own relationship with seven. I really do like that, but he's kind of, he's the tech guy. So he doesn't really do a whole lot beyond that. His moments and episodes are really good. And the few episodes he has where he's a major focus, I really do enjoy him. But again, he doesn't really do a whole lot. Again, it's it's like you said, he's he plays his role and he plays it well. He doesn't do anything crazy, doesn't do anything spectacular, he just does it well. And it's okay, mm. it's it's fine. Um uh, then we one? have 
uh, the support team member who doesn't matter, who for some reason keeps showing up in the credits. Which uh, one? Uh, the one that isn't Hurricane Blue. Because Which I was just about one? to say, and then we have Hurricane Blue, who also <laughs> doesn't really do anything. She's just I, here. She... She's here because she's played by Hurricane Blue, essentially. I Again, that sounds mean. It's a little mean. She basically doesn't fucking do anything. And I'm pretty sure the only reason she has any like significant screen time or dialogue is because it's Hurricane Blue. And otherwise, there's no reason to have her on the show. Uh, again, it sounds mean, but it's true. It does sound mean, but it's completely true, is that... She's a non-character who is here because she is played by Hurricane Blue. Uh, I, I, you know what? I mean, she's she's fun. She's like she's kind of funny. Fun. Like, what does she do? Well, I was about to say there are times where like she'll be like, she's a like when she has a character and they write her into scenes beyond just like techno babble. They kind of make her like weirdly super ridiculously optimistic. Where like in the end game, we're like. You know, there's this weird, like, AI conglomeration shit going on where, like, she kind of, like, makes a peppy, like, super optimistic. Like, this kind of makes our lives easier. And everybody looks at her like she's completely insane. <laughs> like, she has bits like that throughout the show. And I kind of like that when th- she has those bits, which are never. But otherwise, she's just there. And and this is she's when like, Jay realizes that wasn't Hurricane Blue, though, someone else. <laughs> no, that's definitely, that is definitely Are you sure? Arisawa. Yes, that is abs. That is now, definitely now you have to go check. Her. AJ, AJ, I know the, I know this. Do you though? I, mean, like, I do. It could, it could be someone else. It is, it is definitely objectively. It could be Hurricane fail. Pink. You don't know. There is no Hurricane Pink, <laughs> Dick. <laughs> <laughs> if you said a Barry Pink, maybe yeah, I'd give you that one. But that's not even a, a bar character. Pink doesn't exist. Neither does Hurricane Pink. She can if she if she believes in herself. No, it doesn't <laughs> work that way. <laughs> Just watch, fucking. Uh, I was gonna say Deck Ranger, uh, Hurricane Twenty years after, uh, uh, I can't want. I keep want to say Decca Pink, fucking <laughs> Hurricane Pink, out of fucking uh, they, nowhere. They, they... They spent their budget on Hurricane Red Superform. They're not going to have a new ranger show up out of nowhere. You never know. I think. Uh, a hurricane. Uh, no, you know what? We got to be like really abstract like the other ones. We got to be like. Uh, hurricane Chartreuse. No, it's going to be like. Uh, it's going to be like. We got Kabuto and the other one. It could be like Caterpillar or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, going on. Talk about Back zero whatever, one. Yeah, uh, that's basically it for the anchor crew. Uh, I guess real quick to touch on Kata's predecessor Takamoto, mostly because he is coincidentally the chief from Ryuki. Uh, so that we're up to, <laughs> up to two Ryuki characters now. Um, actually, no, we already mentioned Raya. So three. We're up to three Ryuki characters now. Who's just uh, kind of there for some reason, too. It's so fucking weird that, like, they keep him in the opening, even though he's long fucking dead by the time they put him in the opening. <laughs> they want to be like, nice he, to him. I, I will say, I did find it really surprising that they just outright killed him in the first episode. I was expecting that, like, he'd just be in a coma. You know, they do the usual thing, like, like, the new hero replaces the old hero, and the old hero is just kind of temporarily around. And then, like, near the end, the old hero comes back at, like, the moment of crisis. And then he kind of officially patches, passes the torch there. Or, like, some shit happens and, like, he turns evil or, you know, he's, like, an imposter or whatever the fuck. No, he's just dead. They just, like, they just fucking flatline him, pull the, pull the plug, he's dead in the ground. Episode one. <laughs> It's, it's it's actually it's the funniest shit because like I legit thought the same thing. Oh, it's gonna be uh, but like it is kind of funny because like out of fucking nowhere, it's just like oh he's just dead. I guess he's I just was, dead now. I was legitimately so fucking surprised. Where like the fucking credits are rolling and the ending music are playing, and then you see the trauma team roll in or like, no what was it, like, I think. I don't remember if it was like Kata or Toe. Somebody gets like a phone call 
and they rush over and there he is just like flatlining like last 30 seconds of the first episode dude i dead ass fucking yelled he's dead dude me too i was like okay we're gonna go there already wow I was no, I, shocked. I was like, you killed him? Uh, oh, well, okay. I guess the show's got balls. I mean, like, I knew he wasn't going to, like, stick around in any significant way, but I wasn't expecting them to fucking put him in the ground in episode one. <laughs> I mean, hey, he does come back a couple of times. He does. Like, I'll, I'll do get, I do give them this, is that he wasn't just a one and done. He does come back for, like, flashback episodes or... Like one off bits where they need to have, you know, they have the emotional remembrance moment or whenever like like in the end game when seven has a mental breakdown and he hallucinates him. Same. Uh, like, he, yeah, me too. Like they <laughs> they do keep him around. He does still come back. It isn't like it isn't like they just fucking murder him and then forget about him. Like, no, he even beyond keeping him in the ep- uh, the opening every episode. He does still stick around. He does still matter, which I did find really interesting. I did find uh I did find a, a neat touch where, not gonna lie, I kept expecting them to like bring him back from the dead somehow during the end game because he they he's kept him in phone the braver room. eight like literally like oh he's gonna come back as like a fucking phone braver and I, they put I, him I in expected his body. that too I'm not gonna lie or like they fake like he faked his death and the the chief was in on it <laughs> he faked and like just like he death. ran off to do something like <laughs> I don't know like. I wasn't. I wasn't expecting him to just be dead objectively with no like, not coming back. He's dead, and you're dead for liking it. Uh, mm. I mean, it's whatever. <laughs> He's dead. Um, but yeah, zero one. We gotta talk about zero one, Jay. Uh, our technically our big bad, at least for the first half. Um, phone braver is zero one. Uh. The, as you can probably guess, he was the sort of a prototype, the final fro- prototype stage of the Bravers, who his his villainous turn is so fucking silly, where he he starts off as a member of Anchor. He starts off as the kind of like official field prototype, and like just because of horrible rotten luck, every single partner Zero One has just dies. He. Everybody he partners up with just keeps biting the bullet. In one case, literally. And, like, he gets so fed the fuck up, and he starts blaming himself that he literally just becomes a terrorist. He keeps seeing people die so often that he just becomes a he becomes a super villain. And like, and like, one of the times isn't even his fault. One of the times the dude just kills himself. I, like, I did find that. That was the last one, too. That was, that was the, the last, last one. one. Before, I just that find that the... so fucking funny. It's like, oh, all of my all of my partners keep dying in, in awful missions. No, one of them threw up himself off a fucking cliff. Like that's the funny. Like the first one gets shot because he wasn't aware enough. Okay, sure. The second, I think, like the second one got blown up or something. Yes, it was like it was like oh, he made the like the heroic sacrifice or he didn't he was he didn't succeed in time. All right, that's cool. Another thing where I can see where like zero one could blame himself. And the third one, no, he just jumps off a roof and dies. Like, zero one, buddy, that ain't your fault. Like, bro, he, like, he, that is not worth turning evil over. No, no, I mean, no, like, it's, okay, it's my fault, I, bro. I, I, have to, I just have to kill myself now. <laughs> I just find that so funny that the last one is just the one that fucking kills himself. He just, exactly. He, he didn't even, it's not even, literally, you cannot say it's your fault because he fucking, he did it to himself, bro. Exactly. It's so, it's so like weird. That is what set him over the edge. But I, I, I know that's gonna sound horrible out of context. <laughs> you, you, you get what I'm saying. Send him over the edge, huh? Well, literally. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was a real fall from grace. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. That's kind of that's uh, I mean, literally, that that was zero one's fall from grace. Oh my god, I I. As bad as it sounds, I love I love his backstory. <laughs> it's so they just it's keep so dying. It's so unnecessarily tragic for this fucking talking cell phone in this talking cell phone show to like just keep getting people murdered so much that you just quit humanity and decide to start 
becoming evil. <laughs> so, so zero one really honestly, like outside of a couple handful of episodes in the first half is kind of only like there on the side. He is, his whole thing is that he is trying to find what his reason is and like why exactly he exists and why if he, all he does is keep spreading malice and hate and death. Like he might as well help people do it. His, his whole thing is like, he helps fill people, fulfill people's desires, and pretty much all of them are, I am evil and I hate people and I want to kill people, and so he helps with that. And for the most part, he kind of takes the backseat for the villains of the week. Uh, usually, he like he's kind of usually supplying the villains of the week with like technology or technical know-how or like, like if they're a computer hacker, he'll supply them like the hacking programs and the code, and he'll teach them how to do it. And then sometimes he's just kind of like spreading malice for his own his own motives. Like uh, there's episode two or three. Like he hacks into some sort of dated storage thing, or is like a power plant. I don't really remember. But he he his whole thing is just kind of spreading malice because he kind of wants to understand what what is my role in regards to humanity and like what what am I? What is my purpose? What is humanity's purpose? Kind of thing. Uh. And he's he's really fun. He's a really fun villain for this show. Uh, they don't go too weird with it, where he's like some sort of like c- cyber hacker, you know, terrorist organization leader. Like, you, well, I mean, he's kind of an evil AI, but like, they don't do the the standard Tokusatsu expectation, where he's like some ridiculous like. You know, they, they don't do, like, a grid man where he's, like, an evil AI from another dimension that showed up to take over the world because evil, and I use computers because computers are evil and shit like that. No, he's just, like, he's just some dude who's trying to figure out who he is, and he does that by killing people, which, you know, is he, he's kind, he's, he's a dude who's pissed off that he doesn't understand. Exactly. I like He doesn't him, understand do like why him. he's still alive, and so he's going to make it everybody else's problem. I will say I do really like him, though. I really like him because, mm. for one, he, like you said, he's not like the generic, I'm evil, I'm going to beat you up, seven, you whore. He, he's just a <laughs> guy who just doesn't get it, and he's legitimately trying to. And it's like it's almost to a point where like even he doesn't really get what's so bad about what he's doing. And I, and I kind of like that. I really do like that. And towards the end, his, uh, his face turn... When usually I would hate face turns like this, I actually really did enjoy it, especially because he, because he uh, he just becomes a little shit towards the end. No, I do like that where um his his face turn is earned because it's sort of the culmination of his arc is understanding that his purpose is just to his purpose was what he was always built for, and that his entire reason was. He let he blamed himself for what happened, so he pretty much went completely insane on his own defenses, and that Kate is able to teach him that no, you were always on the right path, and all you need is somebody who cares about you as much as you care about them. And I did like that, and it does feel earned, and it I gonna be honest, I did kind of see it coming. I do what, that like he, the that way he they did a it. Good guy? Yeah, I did kind of I expect mean, to be fair. That. Well, again, that's what I'm about to say is that I do like that, like, like you said, he doesn't really become a good guy, strictly speaking, up until, like, the last couple of episodes. And even though, like, they don't do the full, like, usual face turn thing where, like, oh, he's accepted back into Anchor and nobody fucking questions the fact that he murdered a bunch of people and committed a bunch of crimes. You know, like a lot of tokusatsu shows do where somebody will turn good despite having spent several years worth of evil and, like, they just don't fucking question it or whatever. And it's not even, like, a brainwashed thing. Like, no, he he chose to do all that on his own, but he's just a part of the good guys now. <laughs> I like that where, like, for one, they sort of defy the face turn where he kind of just fucks off immediately and he kind of start He keeps doing his own thing, but he's, he's more... Not necessarily helping, but he's not causing chaos anymore and even then he does start to help finally as he he kind of starts to learn the lesson more and more and he starts to sink it in and he starts to become more part of the team with Kada and the others but you're right is that like 
No, you go ahead first. No, I was going to say I do also like that where in reality he's not helping under anchor. He's helping Keita cuz he likes yeah. him. He understands him and he and Keita understands him right back. So it's it's that thing where like he face turned for one character but everybody else he doesn't really care about. Not really. Pretty much. And it's like with the exception of like the chief where he kind of helps the chief out because, you know, he used to work with her and he, I, I don't necessarily think he even like cares the fact that he murdered second, her braver. He's just kind of like, he kind of feels bad that she feels bad about it, but he doesn't really like, he never really apologizes for the fact that he murdered him, murdered her. But no, um, you're right in the way that like, technically speaking, he never really becomes good. He just starts kind of like becoming a little shithead. Like in the first, literally the first episode after, after his face turn is like, is him just fucking bumming around Kata's house, making fun of the fact that his dad's a weirdo and that his parents are going to get divorced. That's it. There's literally, there is literally a part where he's standing in Kata's room, dancing and singing about divorce. He's like, haha, your parents are getting divorced. I love the fact that this is where the emotions on the uh, cell phones come in. I love his little laughing face. His, oh, his, so his shit-eating laughing face is so funny. Like, because he's walking out of the room. It's like, hey, kid, your parents are going to get divorced. While that little, like, <laughs> face is on You're going to have I'm a like, split I family. Love <laughs> I love, again, I love it because he is just a little shit. He's a little shit, but he's endearing. And I like Zero One. Uh, oh, yeah. He has the most graphic, de- or one of the most graphic deaths in this entire show. Oh, Holy my fucking fuck. God. I am that was not I'm, needed, man. No. I am I'm kind of like disappointed he died. I'm kind of well, I'm sad to say that like as many people who died in this show died. We'll see for that more for once we get into the the full spoilers. I, I guess that's one of those things where it's like I guess that's a good thing where it's just like I hmm. wish you didn't. <laughs> I cared so much about him as a character that I legitimately felt upset that he died. Especially but you're the right, way like, he did it, dude. Fuck. Yeah, his death is like, it's this whole thing where like I don't want we don't I don't want to get necessarily too into the like the final arc stuff. Like, he's basically fighting an evil army of like zombie bravers essentially who are like suicide bombing him and his friends, and like he leads to, like because they got the little you know of course this is a Toku show because they've got the toys and they got the attachment to the toys, they've got the little like assistant bits that they snap on like they got a camera or whatever. Uh, you know, they're like the little like chainsaw dude. And like they're they're fucking sacrificing themselves to stop these fucking suicide bombers to save Kata. And like Zero One almost gets away until one of them detonates a huge fucking gas tank and blows up the building that they're in. And like it's so fucking like I was like, oh shit, they finally defy like they defied the the heroic death. And like he fucking walks out of the flames just no damage at all. I'm totally fine. And then he falls apart immediately afterwards after he goes out of earshot. And then the real bag bad fucking walks up, picks up his corpse, and snaps him in fucking half to rip his innards out. It uns like in like and it's just very casually the way he does it. Like he picks him and just snap, rip, th- literally throws him in the trash. <laughs> I was <laughs> No go for it, go for it. I was like, I was so pissed off at Magura when he did that. Dude, I was honestly, like, I, you same. need to fucking die. No, you no, need like, to hang, that was the, dude. That was so crazy because like, it's been a long time since I've seen a Tokusatsu show definit- definitively say he's fucking dead and he ain't coming back. Oh, like, absolutely, he is gone, gone. Like, holy, I, I think I think that's why I felt even worse about it because I'm like. Oh, so we 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 really are not going to get him back. He's dead. He is just that's, he's dead. Dead. That's like that's like Kusaka's death tier of this dude is very definitively dead and he's not coming back. Like, and even then, <laughs> well, I mean, let's not talk about Fies for the moment. <laughs> uh, no, but, but like it's it's yeah, crazy. Like, it really is. It was legitimately crazy, and it's in this kind of sh- in this show. It's not what you're going to expect. Because, again, it's a fucking goofy show, but talking cell phone robots. You don't expect it to go suddenly hard as fuck until it does. And it does it all the time. We're like, the episodes will lull you into, like, 
this is going to be a goofy, wacky episode. And then suddenly, bam, grimdark shit happens. And then just we, just, the entire episode is just grimdark for the rest um, of it. So, actually, it's funny you mentioned that. So, before we get into the final arc, because we're going to, uh, let's talk about some of those fucking wild-ass episodes. Just right there are s- This... This is almost like a random events kind of show where like it is the kind of show where the premise is almost completely secondary and there will be episodes where just fucking whatever happens. I I kind of wish I made a list of all of the weird fucking episodes that happen in this show. Um just just to name a few and I'm sure I'm going to name the ones that AJ is going to name or just a few maybe. Uh, just to name a few off the top of my head, there is the episode where Kata fucking connects Seven to the past and starts talking with a soldier from World War Two. Yeah. Uh, which is doubly fucked because like they actually change history. Like he, I, the whole thing is like they go out to some fucking classmate or whatever's friends grandparents house and like Kata because he's a fucking loser who doesn't care is like writing the most dog shit report on Japanese history we lost and coincident- the yeah basically uh and coincidentally the the lady their house they're staying at you know her husband died in World War II he was a he was a kamikaze pilot and so because of shenanigans at anchor Kata and Seven somehow connect to the pilot's radio system in the past. And through sheer force of will and buffoonery, change history so that he doesn't die. And, like, it would be that kind of plot where, like, you think, like, oh, history's not going to change. Like, it's going to be subtle about it or, like, something like that. No, it's just, like, Kata wakes up the next day and, like, oh, suddenly there's a bunch of people at the house, and suddenly it's super lively, and the guy's not dead, anything like that. And, like, nobody else, obviously nobody else, not even, like, the the anchor gang who are helping them connect to the fucking past, like, have any idea, we're like, oh, yeah, we just changed history, didn't we? And, like, the funny thing, too, is, like, the old man who they saved, he recognizes their names, and he's just like, Thank you so very much. I'm I appreciate everything you did. Uh, which surprised me the most too is that they didn't do like the I once knew somebody by that name. Like he immediately was like, "Oh, oh, you're the kid who saved my life." Oh, cool. I did like that one. Um another episode off the top of my head. Uh let's see. Mm, I'll I'll save that one for last cuz it's the weirdest one. Uh there's the episode where they gaslight Kata into thinking an alien invasion is happening. I swear to God, this kid's gonna fucking shoot up a high school. <laughs> I'm, su- you know what? I'm pretty sure that's what most people are gonna say about him, anyways. I, I swear uh, to God, this kid is this close, dude. I'm like, w- what the fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> that episode was so fucking mean. It was. Like, I was like, like from- what's wrong with you? What like, fuck? obviously, it's gonna be a fucking bait and switch, but it's so like. What the fuck? Like, why are they doing this? Especially because, like, they can all fucking see this kid is hyperventilating, having a goddamn like, panic attack in the corner, and they're just like, Kata's, <laughs> like, Kata is there with his heart beating out of his chest and covered in a bucket of sweat, while the rest of them are there standing in like '60s era, like sci-fi space, like future outfits from like the '60s, and like they're playing fucking Space Invaders and shit. And, like, they're taking it completely seriously, and Kata's keep taking it completely seriously, and nobody thinks to tell him, like, yeah, this is a bit at all until he finds out. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't just, like, kill himself to save from being attacked by the alien menace. It was menace. so mean, dude. I was like, it was, what's wrong with you people? Why it would was you so, do that? Oh. Uh, <laughs> it was so uh, bad. Let's see. Uh, there was the one where some, they, uh, Kata runs into some old man who suddenly has the ability to fucking alter people's memory on, like, on, like, a fucking real like, he just has fucking reality warping powers or some shit. Yeah. Some ancient pe- and then the old dude is a ninja for no real reason. And then- 
<laughs> because why not? And then they they play uh, they play Stratego, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then somehow the way he wins is because of a fucking cat. The That's cat true. saves the day, Jay. The cat saves the day. Uh I. I I I want to save this one for last because it's the weirdest one. But like, uh, another one off the top of my head. Uh, AJ brought it up, and we have to talk about it before we talk about the big, the biggest, weirdest episode. Uh, the fucking lunch episode where they basically they basically like bully the chief to let them get takeout, and it's so like, and all hell so, just breaks loose. So so to give you again a, a quick synopsis of this episode, the support team. And, like, like, the literal Who support team, not, like, the ones who actually had lines up at this point. Like, the ones who are just there, sitting at their desks, who don't fucking do anything, suddenly get focus for no reason. And they the entire episode has them bitching and moaning about how they're sick and tired of their lunchroom. And they're sick and tired of the same cafeteria shit every day. They're like, man, I wish we could order takeout to our secret base. Even though... Logically speaking, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to. Like it's it's not like they're in the middle of nowhere. They're just underneath like a fucking. It's because they only have thirty minutes, Jay. Just place that shit when you before you start your break, bro. That's what I do. Yeah, but thirty minutes, Jay. (laughs) Still, (laughs) not only that, but to be fair, they uh, the 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 biggest issue that they have. Besides the one I'll bring up right now, uh, they're they're ordering from like a legit high end fucking Chinese restaurant. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> that what are you doing? And two, this all would have been avoided if someone would just send somebody to be the pickup bitch. Just send someone well, to go it, get it. For starters, it would have uh, been avoided if they had anybody but fucking Kata doing it. I mean, but, that's <laughs> yeah. But like the like they bully the chief into letting them order takeout, and it <laughs> turns into. A near, a near mass murder of the entire anchor staff. It becomes a revolution. It almost does. Like Kirahara straight, like straight up starts threatening to murder the delivery guy. Like the Kata forgets the orders, forgets the entire order six fucking times in a row, and they play it straight and replay the entire sequence every time he forgets. They play through him. Talking to every single person about what they want to order, getting on the phone, forgetting the order, going back to repeat the order, and they play that I think literally four times before seven is finally like, just let me do it. Let I remember the order. Let me take the phone call. <laughs> <laughs> and like it's the like a like of course you have the bit where like the food all shows up and they immediately have to leave for an emergency that ended up not mattering. And Kata, like a little shit, eats all the food because oh well, it's gonna go to waste. It's gonna the the, the noodles are gonna get soggy, bro. I like, swear, I, I, when that happened, I was like, "You son of a bitch!" I was like, "Kata, you're a fucking moron. <laughs> you should you're not you're not this stupid. You should know what's gonna happen." <laughs> and then of course he eats it all, and then he passes out and has a weird ass dream where his uh his school teacher breaks into the secret base, and Zero One's there, and he's evil again. And they're they're gonna take over the world, and then yeah, it it was a it was a fucking stupid episode, but it was the fun kind of stupid. It was I, I swear, it was to the point where I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" I will say, Kirihara basically throwing a fucking tantrum is the best part, though. It was it was so funny, like, and the way he like he like the way he goes up to the uh, to announce to the other crew is like, "Yeah, we're never ordering from this place again." Like he does it like. Like, a general is announcing that, like, we've lost a diplomatic ally after 30 <laughs> years of service. Like, he's like, like we are severing diplomatic ties with this restaurant. Under Anchor and Shanghai <laughs> Tay will no longer be doing business together. Exactly. What, see, okay. Okay. Now, this is something that I, I know I shouldn't bring up, but I'm going to do it anyways because it's funny. Uh, Chief, you dumb bitch. They left it outside. What's the issue? What's the issue exactly, here? Exactly my point. Like they left it the, outside. What? <laughs> like what the fuck is stopping you guys from like fuck's sake? Just order some fucking pizza or something. Do bro. you not have a receptionist? Exactly. 
Like, that's the thing is that, like, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to logically because it's they're just like a fucking regular office. Like, other than the fact that they're a secret underground base, like, bro, they're just in like a regular skyscraper downtown. <laughs> just just have again, just have fucking Kata call up the pizza man, go upstairs, pick it up, Get pizza bomber. give the man his tip and then come back down. Like, like, like literally, it, 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 it's like the chief makes it sound like the delivery guy's going to come into the base. It's like, he's just going to leave it out in front. Have you never worked in an office like, what, before? What fucking, yeah, the, no fucking pizza guy is going to go to a big skyscraper and, like, go hand deliver it. Unless the pizza's made of fucking gold. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's just like, that was the biggest pro- problem that I had. It was just like, what's the issue? This is this is this is a plot that could have been entirely avoided by literally anybody thinking at this, all. This this this, my friend, is a perfect example of corporate incompetence. This this is what we call an idiot plot. This is <laughs> oh, but uh, it's so good though. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> I think that's the best part about it. It's like it's one of those plots where you can have fun just with it and have fun just thinking. How many ways this could be just fucking like, avoided? Exactly. Just like sitting there and thinking about like, okay, if literally anybody had any kind of brain power, none of this would be happening like, right now. Like, I, I think the best, you know what the best part though? The best part about the whole thing is they completely forgot about the delivery guy who went missing. Yeah. Where did he go? <laughs> He's just I don't gone. know. He's fucking dead somewhere. <laughs> I, I guess so. Am I going to fucking stab <laughs> He must have. <laughs> so, so before we get into the most deranged arc, which is the finale, uh, we get into what I, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say it outright: uh, the best two episodes in the entire show. The grooming arc. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so let's call a spade a spade. Uh, I don't. You know what? If re- you really think about it, it's not quite grooming because, like, the chick isn't really trying to seduce Kata. She's just fucking with him the entire time. Like, okay, poor choice of words, but she's just, like, she's fucking pranking him. It's a prank, bro. I mean, okay. I, she's financially grooming him. She took all of his fucking money, bro. That's not grooming. That's called scamming. Uh, fair enough. That's 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 gri- that's a that's being a grifter. This not is a financial molestation. Okay, I'll give you that one. Okay, okay. So, let me set the stage. So there's a two parter in the show, which of course got a fucking director's cut, and the two parter is both written and directed. And I legitimately did not believe this when I saw the credits for the episode. It is written and directed by Mamoru Oshii. <laughs> the Mamoru Oshii. And if you don't know who that is, go, get off our show. Like, just leave. Get off the internet. You don't deserve to be an anime fan if you don't know that name immediately off the top of your head. Uh, like, and the second I see his name there as both writer and director, I'm like, this is going to be so fucking incomprehensible. So... <laughs> And, like, it's, this is an episode two, like, this is one of the prime episode, example episodes of, like, this premise of the entire show doesn't matter, and it's just a random events plot. So, this random woman, who is completely insane, and carries around a fucking cardboard cutout of a dog, street racer, a cardboard cutout of a dog. That keeps changing. That does that for one keeps changing, two keeps talking on its own when nobody's there, uh, and three she refers to as her boyfriend, which immediate red flag. Uh, but she, for no real particular reason, like starts fixating on Kada. I guess because like he's uh, he's in another like I'm running away from home arc kind of, like he he's like I'm done. I quit again. He leaves seven at home. I don't. I think he just fucking forgot seven. I don't even think he deliberately left seven. I think he just fucking forgot about it. The, 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 and like see, fucked it's, off. You you basically can say it like this is one of those episodes where you can literally just forget the premise entire. You can forget everything that you know about these characters because it basically doesn't even fucking matter. It no, doesn't like, even fucking if, matter. If seven didn't pop up to like 
kind of deliver exposition, you could just ex- you this could be an entirely like standalone series. This would have n- th- you could fucking put this into anything and it would work. You could just air this as is, and I would think this is just like a TV movie of the week, and it'd still be fucking great. So, this random woman, for absolutely no good reason, sabotages Kata's motorcycle like a bitch. Twice. And twice. And basically forces him to go on vacation with her, during which the entire time he financially... Uh, well, I love this phrase. We're going to use it. Financially molests Kata <laughs> by constantly making him pay for everything and max out his credit card. Uh, continuously and repeatedly embarrasses him in front of everybody, publicly and privately. Uh, this is like a weird thing where like the you can kind of think she's like a groomer because like she keeps baiting him into situations where like you would expect there to be some kind of like pervy shenanigans like oh i'm gonna go into the uh the hot spring here alone by myself i won't say anything you walk in ha ha ooh and like obviously the bit she's trying to set up is that he goes in and like she makes fun of him for going in and like embarrasses him like but maybe she isn't. I don't know. It kind of leaves it said like, like that's the weird thing. It's like we don't we don't fucking learn who she is or why she does any of what she does. It, it's kind of left like, up to interpretation no, no reason. of like, it, it's left to up and it's left open to interpretation of like whether or not she would have actually gone through with it. Like she, they don't tell you straight up that she actually is going to or she's actually not going to. It's just Kata's incompetence doesn't allow you to know the answer. Exactly. And, like, it, it, Kata, for no reason, like, just keeps going along with this woman. Because, like, I guess, like, in for a penny, in for a pound. And, like, it's, again, it's just, like, two episodes of them just kind of getting into shenanigans. Like, just ordinary, like, vacation shenanigans. Like, they go out to, dinner, like, lunch. And, like, she's just an embarrassment to him and just completely embarrasses Kata. And, like, they go to, like, the hotel lobby and, like, they play fucking ping pong. And, of course, you know, she's a complete lunatic. <laughs> and then she has the talking dog puppet, which Kata keeps having schizophrenic breakdowns and hearing the dog puppet talk and tell him that he doesn't understand anything, which would certainly terrify me if that <laughs> happened. And, I mean, I'm not going to comment and say that it hasn't happened, but it wasn't a dog puppet that time. Uh, it was the god And, bear. like, the entire time... Yo, man, maybe <laughs> I want. I don't want. I don't want to talk about it. Like the, again, the like the entire time, like, and like there's this weird like she keeps fucking throwing lemons at Kata and leaving lemons on him for no reason. I don't know what the fuck the significance of that was. And then some random yakuza looking motherfucker keeps like literally showing up out of nowhere to like give Kata life advice of how to be a man. And at one point he gets like fucking. Does he like turn into a fighter jet? Yes, he and fly does. Off? He does. <laughs> like he fucking flies, literally flies off and explodes. I think for no reason, and then he just kind of climbs out of the water like nothing happened. Like this, this sounds like it's incomprehensible, and it is incomprehensible. But it's so fucking entertaining. It's I, I literally don't know. How to even describe what happens beyond what I've already have. Like, if I were to just say, like, the objective reality of what happens is that Kata gets tricked into spending money and spending time with some crazy old woman who maybe has the hots for him and is kind of leading him on into shenanigans. That sounds like it'd be either really boring or have no reason to be involved with this plot of the show. But, it, like... The actual way it all happens and the things that happen in it are so fucking bonkers that it it just kind of becomes its own psychological beast of an episode. Like, it, it defies explanation. Like, I, I would need, like, two hours more to explain this fucking episode. I, I, think, I think it's one of those episodes that you really do have to think on. Because, like, it's mm. not going to be one of those, like... Oh, we it to- like you're not gonna get it a hundred percent on your first viewing. I think. Oh, absolutely. Um, I actually did, however, look up because uh, I know you you were questioning this. I I did actually look up what lemons 
mean in Japan at least. So here is the thing that I found. It basically comes up t- if basically it comes out to like a like a sexual symbol, like almost like perverse in nature. Um so if you want to take it like that, maybe cuz I kind of took it because there was a couple of points where the lemon was left alone and then the lemons were wrapped around Keita. Now, there are a couple of words. And again, this is getting into maybe she actually did something with him. Uh, There are a couple of, there's a couple, like the way that the lemons were like wrapped around him. I'm like, is that supposed to symbolize her wrapped around him? It's just not being explicit about it. (laughs) Like it's it's one of those things where like your your mind does kind of like because because even the lemons in that scene where like he's covered in them is kind of shaped like somebody holding him. I'm like, hmm. yeah, I noticed that. Like, hmm. And of course, they start hmm. talking about flowers and stuff like that. And then the scene where she hugs him, which is honestly kind of creepy if you really think about it, uh, where there where she's on the on the chair and they're hugging each other. You have a flower that's bloomed and a flower that hasn't bloomed yet, and I'm like, I, hmm, uh huh. Th- there's something to be said here, and they're not telling me what it is, but my brain is starting to go all different places, and I love that. It is, it is very much expected of Mamoru Oshii. It is very much in line with his his writing and his filmography, where. If you're familiar with his work, you can you kind of know what you're going to go in for once you well, like once you see the cold opening there. You kind of expect what's going to happen. And I don't mean expect in the way like you know that, like the bits that are going to come up, but like you know that this is going to be one completely bonkers. And two it's going to be very artistic and going to have a very uh very ambiguous moral to it, I guess is the best. I I like, like it though because Again, you, oh you, no! It's like I said, it, it is legitimately like the best two episodes of the entire show. It, it comes off very like, and I would love to see. You know, I would love to ask Chad and, and Phil to watch like just this part by itself, just to see what they would think about it and get their thoughts on it. Because I'm like, I wonder mm. what, you know, what you would come up with through that. Because to me, this really just does come up as like. This is Keita's, it's it's his first love, basically. It's like, like his legitimate first love. And like... I mean, I know, that's that's definitely the vibe that it's going for, is that like, it's that kind of, again, I don't want to say typical, like, that story of like, the the summertime romance with a somewhat older girl, and that kind of, that's your awakening as like... A man. Realizing, you know, going, from, I don't want to say like, yeah, like awakening as a man is when you kind of first like first start becoming aware of these feelings and these emotions and impulses like that. I mean, and I would I would assume and this is something that I didn't look up, but I I I feel that even the specific fighter jet that the Yakuza turned into has some kind of meaning towards it because it's a very specific like model of jet. It's not just he, fighter jet. It's very specific bomber jet. I believe he said it was a Tomcat, right? Mhm. I'm... So I don't know if that means something different in Japan, but that does kind of like you hear that phrase and that does kind of, well, for what else, kind of like you hear that phrase and that kind of like very symbolic of like a very wild individual, especially a, uh, a woman or a feminine individual of like <clears throat> that sort of mentality comes to mind when you use that phrase. It, like, so I don't awesome. know if, I don't know if that's what he meant by that. I don't know if that, like symbolism means anything else. I'm pretty or... sure it does because even then, at the at the end, like he, the yakuza kind of symbolizes Keita having to come back to reality by giving him his phone back. Because Keita yeah. loses. Uh, that's uh, the thing we should mention. It's not seven, but he loses his cell phone pretty early on, which basically means he has no. Well, he doesn't lose it. The bitch tosses <laughs> yeah. it in the water just to fuck with him. Yeah, she does. <laughs> but like, it's actually really interesting because it does kind of stand for like him having to come back to reality. Like, okay, she's gone. You understand now. You understand what it's like to be who you are. And maybe you don't like it, but you understand it now. And I, I, I don't know, man. The entire That entire two-parter, like, it legitimately left me shocked and, like, speechless for a while. I was like, wow, that was fucking fantastic, dude. Fuck. Oh, absolutely. 
Mm. Honestly, like, and I kind of feel bad for saying it. I don't think the show like reaches the same heights as it does after. No, it that does episode. not. I can. No. A- as much as I like this show in in its entirety, uh, that it it did a hundred percent peak right then and there. Oh yeah, absolutely. But no, yeah, like, uh, I kind of understood that. Like, the yakuza is sort of both a symbolization of like the older man who kind of like you know like a father figure of sorts who coaches you through that kind of arc and like also a little bit of like Kata's own maturity kind of coming in and telling him you know I don't want to say like driving him like that sort of like mentality of like this is what a man would do this is like this is the idea of like what a man would do as like a youth would go into and it's like it's so interesting like there's so much you can dissect and there's so like so many little intricate details and symbolism that it's so fucking great and interesting and is literally just two <laughs> random episodes of this show. It, honestly again like if you if you have to watch anything watch episodes 19 and 20. It's it's right up there and um I'm not saying it's on the same level of like introspectiveness or anything like that, but it's right up there in quality with like the samurai episode from Makai Senki where it's just like, this is is like an episode you can watch by itself and just kind of get it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I would, I would definitely agree with like, this is an episode where like, this has basically nothing to do with the overarching plot or narrative of the show, but you could just watch it. And this kind of tells you both everything you need to know about the show and works completely on its own. And, and I like it. It's like, it's again, it's that's, it's the episode where you just kind of get it. And I'm like, you know what? That That's a mark of a good episode where you could just show it to somebody and they're just like, oh, yeah, I get it. I get, I get it. I'm like, yeah, it's great. So, Jay, let's talk about... Uh, actually, no, we, we didn't even talk about the horror episode. It doesn't matter. They're, they're dead. They're all dead. Oh, that's right. I fucking forgot about the horror episode for a minute. Well, it doesn't matter because they, they all died. That, well, they kind of bring that back in the finale, though. No, weirdly wait, not with the, a little bit with like the well, kind of. I don't know. I don't. It's not the same though. Yeah, yeah it's a little bit the same. I don't. What's well, it's, it's the, same okay. the same? The same. Actually, that's something we should mention right now too. Um, this show is a weirdly big stickler for continuity, like minor continuity for no real reason. It just is like one of Kate's mm. like like. One of Kate's forty-year-old pretending to be a high schooler friends, uh, she just writes like phone novels for one episode, but she keeps doing it. Mm. She just keeps doing yeah. it. Or one of my one of the ones that I really thought was weird. Um, they got weirdly obsessed with nut cream corn snacks, and they're just there for the rest of the ep- for the rest of the series. They're just there. I'm like, I I guess they're <laughs> here now. Uh it but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah go for it yeah i did really enjoy that the, the show is very the show is very fixed on its own continuity and like not in a really obnoxious way like again like i mentioned it earlier where uh kurohara ends up getting suspended from the from the from active duty and like it, they'll just like he'll be like he'll be about to run off like because the plot's happening We're like bro what are you doing like like they won't bring it up as like a as you know kurohara kind of thing and be like They'll, he'll just be casually reminded of it a few episodes later. And he's like, I wish I could help, but, uh, you know, I can't, you know. Uh, <laughs> small details like that, too. It's like, they'll just kind of casually bring it up when they, they don't really need to. And, like, they'll stick to these kind of finer details, like you said. I, I think that's it the was, show, also, that the show is happening in a very short time. Hmm. Because I, I don't think that it's, much, I don't, actually, I don't even think a year passes by in this show. I don't believe they say so, no. I don't believe they specifically say how long it's been since uh, Kata joined the That's because we don't have a Christmas episode. Uh, It was one of the recaps. Oh, well, that doesn't count. I mean, it kind of counts. No, it doesn't. A little bit. The .5 episodes of Zia don't count. This doesn't count. Yeah, but these were... uh, I was about to say they were about as entertaining, but no, the uh, the recap episodes in this kind of blow. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um... To, to go, I mean, I don't know. the The Christmas one has a uh, zero one and third run flying off on a sleigh, so that was pretty fun. I mean, 
Maybe. I, I don't know. No, no. Okay. Let me, let me rephrase that. Zero one is using third as a sleigh to ride through the sky. And he just is because fuck you. He's zero one. He can do that. Um, Actually, before we get into the final arc, uh, I'm going to talk about the extras that we got on the version that on the torrent that we got, just real quick. Um, so, just to go off by the ones that I that I was watching, because I did watch, I watched all of them. I did because I had time before you came in. Um, Christmas special, eh, whatever. We got a bunch of the music videos, whatever. Commercials, whatever. Uh, two things that did stand out to me, and I don't know if you watched the, the, this one's particular, the cut scenes for. This show, especially because a lot of these, the cutscenes are mostly for like the last episode. Uh, very interesting. Very, very I, interesting. I did not get around to watching it mostly because I wasn't sure what was going to have spoilers or not. Um, I watched it after, obviously, the final episode. Uh, very interesting. That was that was what my plan was going to be was uh, to watch it until after I was done, but I haven't gotten a chance yet. Um, so I haven't seen. So we'll get to the, my my thoughts on that real quick uh, after we get to the uh, ending. Um, the mm. Katai Knights is actually really is actually kind of just it's it's basically just Hurricane Blue and her fuck buddies fucking around in, at headquarters. That's <laughs> literally it. My favorite thing though, and you're gonna kind of find this surprising, are the uh, the the mutters. Literally, it's just called mutters, and it's just seven and sometimes zero one, just kind of like sitting around in phone form, just kind of just kind of talking. I did watch that one. I watched one of those, <laughs> and that those were fucking hilarious. They were, it's so weird because they're like they're like oddly comfy, and I'm like, I like this. They're just kind of there. They're just like, hey, yo. It's, it's like a podcast. It's almost like a podcast. It's almost like one you've never probably never heard of. I know, right? What? Like some sort of a uh, some sort of tokusatsu podcast. No, that's ridiculous. Dude. Who would watch that? Yeah, nah, nobody would ever watch that. <laughs> Anyways, so ending arc, Jay. Okay, <laughs> so we haven't talked about the de facto big bad, other than in passing. Um, Raya? Magira, I wrote down his full name somewhere. Um, bu- 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 I actually did not write down his name. I could have sworn I wrote it down, because he's kind of got a weird name. Uh, I think it's, I want to say Kuroda Magira. Magira. Um... Who is Common Rider Raya, also Ultraman a Ghoul. Uh, uh, hot um, off the boats of getting his ass rammed from Guy. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I'm never going to so let you Ma- get. I'm never going to let that go. No. Uh, so, Magira is. He is a ex agent of Anchor who went rogue because. Uh, Lol. Reasons. Uh, because hamburger, because <laughs> burger, yeah. um, who is kind of, sort of zero one's partner throughout the show, where he's kind of uh, his human, you know, he he's his hands and legs, figuratively speaking, for the stuff zero one can't do as a cell phone. So Magyar's whole thing is he's very much about testing humanity. He's kind of a uh, the the realities of humanity. He's trying to wants to expose the secret inner inner side of humanity. And so a lot of that is involving fucking with Kata and testing Kata and testing Seven and putting them into, like, life or death situations to, to I don't want to say, like, the Joker, but, like, he, he's putting them into these situations to, like, make them think about themselves or die in the process. He's, like, a weird chess master thing where, like, everything he does, he is, you know, every, you know, all according to plan bullshit where no matter what he wins... And so his whole arc leads into, so the first arc mostly focuses on Zero One and a little bit him. And Zero One turns good, like I said. And after a point, the show doesn't really have much of a driving focus where Zero One mentions that there is a a traitor within the organization that the show kind of just immediately forgets about until the finale. Where... One of the founders of the organization is working with Magura and the government to essentially enact net neutrality where they want they want to make people have to get IDs and a license and they have to be registered like with their real oh, identities fuck. to use the internet. 
Oh my god. And so part of the part of that involves Magura making his own bootleg bravers, which we he calls Gene, which we've mentioned a little bit beforehand. Which involves him again, as we mentioned, literally killing Zero One to steal his bits to reverse engineer it to make it become self aware, yada yada yada. We'll get we'll get more skip in the head. So their whole scheme was again to basically take away an anonymity and put the government in full control of the internet because it's too dangerous to allow to be to let anybody use unsupervised uh and part of that involved the the genes which were basically siri 1.0 where it's a cell phone that learns that who you are and adapts itself to learn you know based on who you are and develops a personality and it's like a bootleg phone braver. And eventually his whole scheme is that they they start being able to walk and move the same as all the other bravers. And they start developing their own personalities. And of course their whole scheme is that it's gonna be like it's gonna be like a big bait and switch where oh, we're they're gonna go rogue, and that's where we're gonna step in and be like, oh, it's all the internet's fault, and that's where we're gonna take over. And so there's a lot of that, like they're trying to like frame the internet as being inherently bad and like it's it, we kind of mentioned this like this show is very very much more relevant now than it was when it came out because like the whole talks of like anonymity being bad and like the internet being unsupervised being bad <clears throat> excuse me gross and like wanting to take away control of the internet from the people to the government and more restrictions. It's like, bro, this has been happening for the last like six years straight. Like this is just this is just what's happening nowadays. It's wild. And like, it's oh yeah, it it legitimately caught me off guard when they brought this up. I'm like, bro, what the fuck, dude? Like same here. Like I mean, I I, I, I you saw my reaction to it. Like mm. I was like, wait, that's just what they're doing now. But for real, like it, it actually like kind of floored me for a second. It's like, so basically they want like all of these fuck like, I don't know what the newest one is, Baker, whatever the fuck it's called nowadays, like net neutrality, Kappa, Sapa, whatever the fuck it is, Theta, Zeta, mm. Gata, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Zama. Zama, Big Zam. Um, <laughs> big Zama. Big, imagine if Big Zam tried to stop you from using the internet. What would you do? Nothing. Uh, I, well, I couldn't stop because he's big. Zam. <laughs> exactly. Um, but like, it's weird because it, it it's using the same talking points as people like who are trying to actually push these things. You know, internet's bad. Look how much crime happens on the internet. Look at how much people get hurt on the internet. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's and the weirdest part, Jay. The weirdest part is that like, it kind of. It kind of gets swept under the rug a little bit. It kind of for the most part it does because it never really gets any kind of like resolution or like there's never really like a moral given to it. Like Kirahara ends up turning on a uh, anchor and joining with them because of course you know his family was killed by the internet and so he kind of he kind of hates that freedom of the internet and then he kind of joins with them because he doesn't. And that kind of sets up uh, an arc there, too, with the finale. But the thing is, that, like, yeah, it's just they kind of just fucking forget about it because Magura's secret plan the entire time was basically fucking destroy the Earth and wipe out humanity. Because this whole thing is that, like, he knew humanity once Gene sort of became self-aware and started learning and sort of, like, really, like, growing from humanity was, like, was immediately going to go completely insane and go power mad and want to take over the world and become dictator and knew that it was going to start fucking killing people en masse the second humanity's turned against it. Uh, you know, as has happened in insert fucking any sci-fi story from the last 50 years here. And of course this whole thing, you know, he was basically lying to everybody and like, but like the anchor dudes who were joining with him, they basically get, no comeuppance. They, you know, they barely have to answer for their crimes. The government guys just fuck off. Like, they're just like, yeah, uh, it's going to be problematic. We have to deal with this. So you guys are on your own. Bye. Uh, like, 
if fucking the entire like moral arc and the moral argument is just completely thrown out the window because Mugger is just using it to fucking enact doom. It, it doesn't. It doesn't help either because like no characters besides Kirahara, no characters really take a stand one way or the other because they're ba- they barely even know what's happening. So like K- no. Kate is not fighting for anonymity because he well, fuck that well, he doesn't even fucking care. He just wants seven. None of Under Anchor really care. None of Anchor in general really care. Under Anchor only really cares in so far of like because of Gene. This the scheme means that they're going to. Oh, what the fuck's this? Oh shit! Nice. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do that later. Uh, like Under Anchor only really unnecessarily cares because part of Magura's scheme was to expose them and expose what they've been doing. Insofar only to frame them as being cyber criminals, more or less, and like blaming them for shit that's happening specifically so they can enact their their net neutrality shit bullshit. But like nobody really has any strict opinion on the Internet beyond like Keita thinking the Internet's cool and Kirahara thinking it's evil and nobody else really has any kind of input at all. So it's it's a really fucking weird moral when you think about it and like. Honestly, to agree, I'm kind of glad that they didn't focus on it too much because, like, again, like we said, it's way more relevant nowadays. And had they made that stance, like, in 2009, it would have been really awkward if they kind of, like, made a a stance on this argument back then before any of this shit really mattered at all. Yeah, because, like, in 2008... We were barely even whiffing. I think it was Peepa. I think it was or Soft. That wasn't until like 2013. What was the first? That wasn't one? until late. Way there later. Like a, there was one before that, though, wasn't there? Mm, uh, there was like Sopa or Peepa, <laughs> but all of those weren't until after the 2010s. Okay, because like, like for for reference in terms of like internet anonymity. I'm pretty sure Project Chinology hadn't even happened yet when this was going through. So, or, like, it had just happened in terms of this is how new to the internet reaching the normal sphere happened. Like, Twitter had existed for maybe a year when this episode, when this plot was written. Like, it was that early to the argument. I, I think that is something that is to be said about this show, is that I think if it was, if this was, if this show was made, even, like, Three years later, it would have a bigger impact on like the argument. It would have actually had a. St- it, it would have actually taken a stance, because as it is now, it's kind of just used as a. And it's kind of weird to say it. It's kind of used as a. Oh, this is just a villain plot. This will never happen. This this is an exaggerated <laughs> villain plot. This will never happen. Yeah, it, it, this is such an exaggerated villain plot. Is a. Uh... A part of the government plotting to murder the president of the United States because, you know, the president of the United States is against them. And they can reiterate this gigantic elaborate conspiracy to cover up his murder. It'd be so weird if something like that happened in uh, Texas in December of 1969. You know, it'd be weird. It'd be weird like that, you know. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, it, it, it is it is strange because, like, when you really think about it, it's like, Again, three years later, and it would have been so much more relevant. I even like right now, we're talking about it, and it's so weird how much. Th- th- again, it seems like something at the time would have been an exaggeration, but now it's like we we hear about this shit every fucking week. There's literally exactly. there's literally a bill going through Congress right now to do the exact same fucking thing, and it's like maybe people should just watch K-Tai. You know, maybe people need to watch this to learn their fucking lesson. Because if you don't, Gene fucking happens. Exactly. <laughs> and, but yeah, like, like I knew obviously his plan wasn't really that because it never really fit in with his motives. But like, it is super weird how like this entire moral argument and plot line just immediately gets dumpstered for evil AI wants to t- fucking wipe out humanity and take over the world. It's, it's so weird. And like, again, to a degree, I appreciate that they didn't. Because, again, like we're saying, this happened so early on where where this argument was more seen as like a theoretical rather than a literal or a reality that you could have this kind of argument. But at the same time, like the fact that it is so early means that it doesn't really have any kind of nuanced take or really takes any sides beyond like, 
obviously the government having control over what you can say is bad, but beyond that, it doesn't really affect anything at all. And it never really like focuses on anything or makes an argument out of it. It's just government. I mean, when you think about it, right? Like the, the main thing that a villain plan should do is affect the main hero. And Kate doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't even know. He barely knows. He, he the only reason he cares is because seven is in trouble. So like exactly. Even when you think of it that way, it's kind of like it's kind of like one of those things that kind of gives it away that this is not the final plan because Keita he barely even plays into that idea at all. So it it is kind of weird. But again, I do agree that I do like that it doesn't in a sense that because it was too early. But I do kind of think maybe it, this is like kind of calling for like maybe a remake. Like or just like a, a another season of it to like really hit that home, but again, who knows? Mm. I don't know. But let's we'll talk see. about Gene. Uh, I thought Gene was actually pretty creepy, even though it was uh horribly generic and super fast to the point where it reached. But you know, like three episodes before the finale, I'm you know I'm not too surprised. Maybe we should have given up that ugly stalker episode for Toko. Just fucking saying. Maybe maybe we should have skipped one of the random filler episodes. You know, as much as I love the lunch episode, maybe we get done without the lunch episode. No, we can get we rid of the. Much... We can get rid of the one with the. Maybe we can get rid of the one with. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can. Uh, maybe we can. We can cut the third episode that had um, had Wakana from Double in it, where she does nothing at all. I completely forgot uh, that was her. That's fair. She does. She she uh, despite being like. Right before double, she barely looks anything like she does in that. I maybe we should have like I don't know. To be fair though, that's kind of the thing that happened with like where you go from Ryuki and you have the uh, the nerdy chick from the Ori Journal, and then you go to Fi's where she's smart brain lady, and she looks completely fucking different. That's makeup, baby. Maybe we could have given Hollywood. Maybe we could have given up uh, the cancer patient episode. I don't think that was really needed. <laughs> the was, can- it a, was it? She had like cancer. Remember. Oh yeah, the the, the with, fucking um, with the, the internet sing- concert episode where they have the theme song play in its entirety because the theme song actually exists in the show. Yeah, I, as an I, actual I, song that makes me that made me laugh so hard because that implies that Under Anchor or Anchor in general commissioned a pop star to make a theme for themselves for no I, one else but themselves. I mean, uh, weirder things have happened. It's just to pop the boys. It's like literally no one's going to hear this song but us. Well, now I guess now everyone hears the song because they can't. They use it in their advertisements and they have it playing in their fucking stores for some reason. I. <laughs> that's so weird. That's it's I was. don't get that. I don't. I there was a couple of fourth wall breaks that just kind of caught me. Like, what the fuck is happening? But um, anyways, back to Gene, as we were saying. Uh, yeah, like you said, it did It did kind of hit that point a little too fast. However, however, the the part that actually kind of got me like, kind of like, ugh, was the uh, let's show people a video to kill them on mass and it actually worked. And I was like, oh, what? Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, it, G- it actually is happening. So Gene develops... Um... So Magurega kills Zero One, and he steals his uh, his special brain chips that lo- lets the Bravers become self aware. And of course, immediately the uh, the genes activate, and they they have this thing that they introduce throughout the show of uh, called parallel something linking, where the two Bravers can kind of merge their consciousness to boost their processing power, and it sort of like exponentially keeps increasing over and over and over again the second they link to like infinite levels. And of course, that's a bad thing that happens because they fucking go supernova and like blow shit up and they completely just are completely destroyed after they do it. So immediately the show sets like this is a bad thing. Never do it. So, of course, they two two of them immediately do it. Uh, The second they get self-awareness, they immediately do it. And uh, all of the genes link as one and become a hyper power uh, brain construct and immediately decides that it's going to take over the fucking world, as you do. And... Because our heroes try to stop it and leads to Third's death, who dies. So th- there's an earlier episode, too, where uh, to- we kind of briefly touched about it with Toko. Her braver got a virus that they couldn't fix. And so it's basically been in lockup this entire time. It's been a special shielded lockup 
turned off so it couldn't spread this virus and it wasn't getting fucking hurt by the virus. So they pull, I think it was, what was hers? It was like fourth. Yeah, it was fourth. Yeah. So they pull fourth out of storage and third links up with thir- uh, fourth to take the virus and link into Gene to give Gene the virus. Uh, both of them die and it doesn't work. And Gene immediately decides, okay, I'm just going to kill all humans now. So Gene throws on the fucking ring tape on every <laughs> single possible screen that it can interface, which is just everything. It, if it has a screen, it can fucking log into it. Your cell phone, it can. Your TV, it can. All the random TVs out on the street, because it's Japan and there are fucking giant neon billboards and LCD screens fucking everywhere. Yep, it can log into that and it's going to play you the fucking ring tape. And it legitimately starts killing people. And you just get these scenes where, like, everybody's standing there and, like, standing in a crowd watching the screen. And you just start seeing people drop to the ground. Like, immediately hit the ground, dead. Barely any reaction from people as they're going. And it's like, at one point, it gets a little ridiculous. It's like, just stop fucking looking at the screen, guy. Just close your fucking eyes. There's nothing forcing you to look at it. But they're pretty like, colors. Exactly. Like, like, Kata, like, there's this whole bit, like, where Kata's running away from it, and he has to, like, he has to run away and climb into a fucking storm drain to get away from the broadcast. But, like, bro, just fucking crawl into a bush, cover your ears, and close your eyes, you'll be fine. Like, okay, like, with, okay, to be fair, Kate, like, Seven, because he's kind of linked into the global consciousness of the Bravers, he's starting to get affected by Gene, too. So, like, I understand with Kata why he needs to go super out of his way, but, like, People keep fucking looking at the screen that keeps killing people. Uh, they were just told is going to kill people if they look at it. So, I mean, like, like half this genocide is on them. I, I will say, <laughs> though, the thing that did catch me a little bit off guard was the... Because I was, like, thinking, like, oh, they're they're just uh, knocked out or Gene is uh, hacking their brain to pass them out. No, they're just like, no, they're fucking dead. They're yeah, just no, straight up fucking he, dead. He's he's fucking shutting off their nervous system. They're that dead. is They're that was the part back. that kind of scared me, where it's just like, oh yeah, he's literally playing a video and sound that just shuts your brain off. It just stops mm. it. I'm like, oh, that's fucking scary. Oh, it's and, and like, for all we know, this is happening everywhere in the entire world. Like, we don't we don't know if this isn't fucking um, we don't know if this is happening outside of Japan. I would assume so. I would assume it's happening only in Japan, but we don't fucking know. As far as we know, this is just happening in the entire world, and nobody knows what the fuck is going on. I mean, like, it's so, it, it is so legitimately, like, it's such a shift to fucking grimdark that, like, the show hadn't hit that. Like, at this point, like, nobody really had died in this show. Like, uh, yeah, people had gotten hurt, and people had gotten injured and, like, uh, like hospitalized. Uh, other than, like, Takamoto, who died because of plot, like... Nobody really died up to this point. So then we get civilians dropping en masse because the big bad is enacting genocide. It's it's such a jarring switch, and it's so fucking shocking. And you would think that, like, the show can't top it from there, like, mass murder in the streets. But I kind of don't even want to talk about it. I can't believe it. They killed the fucking phone, man. They killed the fucking cell phone, bro. What the fuck, man? So, yeah. All those minutes I paid for. I know, right? I'm not going to, like, this is, my fucking contract doesn't cover for world-ending calamities, (laughs) dude. So. I I had a limited talk and text on the weekends. (laughs) <laughs> and it's not the weekend it's a thursday right now all of the all, all of the like zoomers are not gonna understand what we're talking about i know right like there's nobody here like under the age of like 16 like if you're under the age of 16 you probably actually know i'd say maybe like even under the age of like eight if you're under like 18 or 19 you probably have no fucking clue what we're talking about no <laughs> they, y'all 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 back in my day we had to pay to text people oh my god back in my day we couldn't talk and text at the same time we didn't have the facebooks we had aim 
And Our it, phones didn't have cameras in them. They couldn't even show pictures in them. Uh, we had to do. We had to use the funny words to make our pictures. <laughs> I had to press the uh, the three key four times to get a T. Oh, fuck me. Don't remind me of that. <laughs> oh, I uh, hated that shit. Oh, uh, god damn it. Anyways, that's what we were saying. Anyways, uh, so so back to this horrible, tragic, uh, bittersweet ending. It reminds me of that tragedy. <laughs> yes. So after just deciding to try and fucking drown Kate to death, because you know what? Why not? Uh, Jean is able to hook itself into Seven's body, but Seven pulls one, pulls a fucking fast one and fully merges with Jean into his own body. And he forces Kata to have to kill him in order to stop Jean and save the world. And it's, it is played a hundred percent straight. The fact that this talking cell phone is like, you need to kill me or the human race will die. And you've got Magra there. Standing in the la- background, laughing like a fucking lunatic, and you've got Kata legitimately having a full-on fucking breakdown as Seven literally starts to fucking melt in his arms, and he starts to like, uh, it's like the ending of fucking Terminator Two, where it's like, I cannot self-terminate Kata. You need to destroy me to save the world and save all of time, like. And if honestly, Seven even does the fucking thumbs up. I was gonna mention it too. He I even does fucking, it. I, yeah, just what a cheeky bitch he does that. It's <laughs> I fucking love it. Yeah. <sighs> and and honestly, this sound this is gonna sound really stupid. And to be honest, if it weren't it 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 earns it, but it is still a little corny. A single tear drops from Kata's eye and lands onto Seven, and that's enough to short him out and cause him to melt and die. <laughs> and, and the world is saved, and I guess Magura gets arrested because he stands there fucking reeing at the top of his lungs. <laughs> because, oh, even though this my entire scheme went up to this, you guys weren't supposed to win. Like, Seven wasn't supposed to become a human and sacrifice himself. And I fucking love the way this is shot because Kata fucking grabs him by the collar and is about to fucking pummel his face in. But he is so legitimately distraught and broken up that he like he literally, literally physically cannot even injure Magura. It's it's so gut-wrenching to be entirely honest it really is it, mm, it really fucking is it, it hurts it hurts because like you you can fiz- and you know props to the fucking i mean that's why he's a he's he's a big guy now right props mm. to the actor you can physically like you can f- see it in his face he's just like man i fucking wish i could i fucking wish i could by just do not have the fucking strength. And I'm just like, God damn. Like, like, like Kata can't even force himself to say anything about it. Like he is just so distraught that he is just, he's barely holding up. It's, it is so good. It is so, so fucking good. It, it's honestly, it's, it's one, of, again, it's one of the, uh, it's one of the only, Tokusatsu death, I can only say, besides third, where I was just like, I'm not crying. Shut the fuck up. You're crying. I'm not, I'm not crying. It's it's TV Nihon's shitty subs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? They weren't as bad as usual. <laughs> they were at least readable. They, they were not, they did not seem like they were made by a half-blind deaf Malaysian man. Not this time, no. Not this time. Um, No, but like I said, it, it's... It is legitimately one of those deaths in Tokusatsu where I'm just like, fuck, that actually, that just sucks, man. Fuck. Mm. I feel, I'm I'm like sad. I'm like actually sad that he's dead. Seven's fucking dead now. He turned into a crystal ball. Yeah, his like, his, the seven key to like gets fused into Kata's tear and becomes like a weird crystal he becomes a lassie <sighs> <Fuck off. laughs> 
the, the show kind of like oh. doesn't really have an ending beyond that point. Like, Under Anchor is like in super big trouble with the fucking cops, even though by all accounts they none of really what happened should have happened because like they straight up say that like s- several people higher up know what the hell is going on and i'm sure it, like somebody at some point should have been like yeah okay this is the reality of it but like whatever that's splitting hairs but, like under anchor is basically dissolved all of the bravers are dead and they're never going to make any more and like everybody that kata cares about is basically either dead or moving on and like like the show just kind of ends from there, honestly. It, the, yeah, K- Kata doesn't really. N- nobody really has an ending. There's no really like re- there. There kind of isn't any kind of closure. Like Magra, I guess, gets arrested. The government guys, I guess, get away with it. Uh, the the anchor president, I guess, gets fired or gets away with what he did. Like under anchor, I guess, still exists. Or I guess they're getting shut down or whatever the fuck. Like, I don't know. It, and like I guess it doesn't really need an ending, but like, like there a little bit of closure after after seven dying would have been nice. Like a little bit of like, uh, even like the slightest bit of reassurance was like, uh, th- things will eventually get better. You know, you you won't necessarily move on from your grief, but you'll learn to live with it. And you know, there's there's a little glimmer of hope that things might come back to normal. But like, no, no, it's just kind of like. Kata has a breakdown in the office, and then... Tough shit, kid, ha <laughs> Yeah, it's like, yeah, uh, you might have a job tomorrow, we'll see. And then he, he mourns with the other Braver crew, and then and then the show just kind of ends, and then he has a weird hallucination of Seven after he throws the crystal into the air. Uh... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Tough shit, motherfucker, ha <laughs> That's life, bitch. <laughs> you live, you die, buy our toys. <laughs> I mean, look, this is where the cut, one of the cut scenes that come out. One of the, uh, I don't know why they call them cut scenes. You could just say like, you know, outtakes, I mm. guess, whatever. Um, there is sort of a, I don't want to say better, but more of a like, at least he isn't fucking depressed and suicidal <laughs> kind of ending where he comes home after all of it has happened and it, and his entire family is kind of there just like, hey, we heard what happened. Um, we heard your bud died, your little buddy. But you know what? You uh, you did good. You did good. And like, they're, they're trying to like be nice to him. Like they're trying to comfort him because they know that his best friend like basically just fucking died in his arms. <laughs> And, like, it shows him, like, leaving for school the next day, like, right before the uh, the ending with uh, Mito, which mm. I don't get what was going on with her. Um, she existed. Well, she did. Uh, like, right before that, they kind of, like, all see him off. Again, it's, like, like a nice little family moment. But it's, it's not, again, it still doesn't have any real closure. Uh, the whole show, the show doesn't have closure at all, to be honest. No, and I guess to be fair, that's kind of, like, the moral of the show is that, like, it's very much a coming of age kind of thing, but no story really ever truly ends. No, there's no real ever kind of like nice tight bow to everything. Like that's reality, you know, real life. There is no storybook ending, good or bad ending. It just, that's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. And that's all I can say before we get copyright struck, even though we're not on YouTube and I'm just Uh singing it badly. I mean, it's it's. I, I'm, I don't think Spotify has really good copyright though, so it's fine. Probably not. It's, I don't. I don't. I, um, I, ain't, I ain't gonna fuck with Sinatra. No thanks. I know he's dead, but I ain't gonna fuck with him. His ghost just comes and just whacks you. It, what he could. He could honestly, mm-hmm. you know, he'd be like, "Hey, Jay, Baba the Boopy," and he just looks like Tony Soprano for some reason. <laughs> uh, the wrong ghost you. got called. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's right. He is dead too, isn't he? <laughs> He is, yes. I completely forgot he died. Uh, he's just one of those guys that I just think is old, but no, he's dead. Damn. Stop dying, dumbass. Um <laughs> Uh I guess that's pretty much it. So Jay. Yes. Final thoughts on uh K D D seven. So final thoughts, um You hated it. 
<laughs> yeah, the show sucked. Uh, there were there were no Tokusatsu actors in the show at all. I think K ninety seven sucks. Actually, you know what? I didn't. I didn't even point like. I pointed it a little bit. There are so many just random Tokusatsu actors in the show beyond just like the main cast. Like, I don't have a very comprehensive list. This is just like the ones I remember immediately or immediately Bono. recognized. So, uh, the first villain of the week is uh, Bondo from Gaim. Uh, also, Goro from Ryuki. So, four, four Ryuki actors in this. I'm kind of mad nobody else showed up that I noticed. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, uh, Wakana from Double is in the show as another friend of Kata's who just kind of shows up and then disappears for like 15 episodes at a time. She's like a weird hacker chick. She's okay. She's really- that was her? Yes. Shut up. No way. The, the hacker nerd girl with the glasses. That's, oh my that's Wakana. God. Yes. Yo, I... Oh, I okay. Yeah, that that one I will admit that I did not uh, I did not see that. I wow. Okay, and like all right. I'll be fair. Like a few of these were like they hadn't been like it's weird. Like this show has so many Tokusatsu actors as eminent, even though like half of them weren't in Tokusatsu shows yet when the show aired. So like we also have uh, like the president of Anchor was the big bad in Movie War Mega Max. Uh, and one of his minions showed up earlier in the show, too. Uh, another villain of the week was Kaito's dad from Zenkaiju, who, again, complete segue, I had no idea was the fake Kabuto from Decade up until now. I, I completely found that out by accident. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Mr. Osugi from Forze shows up at one point. Yep. Um... Again, speaking of weird movie war stuff, the big bad from uh, the double decade movie war shows up. Uh, again, coincidentally, he's also he's also Batman and Shin Kamen Rider. Uh, weird casting choice there. Relevant. Yes, and uh, those are the ones that I remembered that I noted down. Uh, there were definitely more that I spotted, but like a lot of them were like. Oh, this guy shows up a lot in like the background. Like, um, there's the one episode where like they've got like the the credit card scammer guys who are like logging into people's bank accounts and stealing their money, and like he's like the leader of the group, and he he's that yeah. You've seen him in a lot of shows. Like, um, he was Hojo's partner in Agito, uh, and he was the the old dude with the hat from the the piano man from that one episode of Deno. Uh, and he's been in a bunch of other that. stuff. But, like, he's never been, like, anybody that mattered. And you get a lot of those. Hey, like, he's working. Yeah, he's I, working. you get a lot of those in terms of, like, background roles where, like, it's what, somebody... Was the, was the first guy, not the first guy, was the guy with the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the adamantium rage gun. Who was he? He was somebody, wasn't he? Oh, the, uh, the sound wave dude. Yeah. yeah, that was the dude I just mentioned. Uh, the dude from Double Decade and also uh, Shin Kamen Rider. Oh, uh... There was somebody else that looked... Oh, uh, the uh, the shady, like, G-Man dude who kind of, like, fucked off that nobody... Oh, that yeah, that's right. I forgot about him. And, um, one of the government dudes who is working with uh, Magura and the Anchor Chief is... Uh, he was Rider 1 from Kamen Rider the First. Oh, my God. Knacker, kill him. <laughs> yeah. There were shoot them. Those are like those are all the ones that I can think of of like have had major roles that ye- like. There were definitely a few that I I know I missed or like they had a role but it was like a bit role as like a victim of the week where they don't matter. So like I I didn't really write them down or note them but like there were a lot. There were a lot like I know uh I know Kuze from Yakuza Zero wasn't here. That's true. He was. And, he was uh, just out of nowhere. I was just like, what the fuck? And um, I think like. Rinko's boss, the police chief from Wizard, shows up in one episode too. Yeah, he was the uh, he was the PR dude at the amusement park in that episode. Like, yeah, you, you get a lot of that like bit characters who you've seen in other things, but like aren't really anybody of like worth bringing up. Not no offense to them, of course, but like you've seen their actor plenty of times before, but they're not any like major character. We'll, we'll say specifically for Tokusatsu. Yeah. There Obviously. you go. Say, say, save you the comments. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
oh, this guy is absolutely somebody who matters because he did like he did this one fucking random episode of some show of no real significance, but he did this and you didn't bring that up. So that means you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean obviously. Obviously we don't know. Exactly. Cuz he won the uh he won the uh the fart shitter award <laughs> in 2002. Yeah, he he won the the fart shitter award in 2002 for um uh, Eat you the dick, killer. Dick, I was gonna say like dick butt fart killer seven thousand or something. Watch this. No, you gotta give it like a you gotta give it like a like a like a really artsy name like uh the financial molestation of uh, Benjamin Button or some shit. <laughs> uh, but no. Um, um, well, my final thoughts, because you said it. No, I, I didn't even um, say my final thoughts, but you go right ahead. Oh, no, no, go for it. Go okay, for it, uh, I guess to sum it all up, this show is everything that I was hoping it would end up being, and more, way more. This, I, I'm going to call it now, this is going to be the best show we watch all year. I'm specifically saying <laughs> show, because I know Shin Kamen Rider's coming out this year, and that's going to obviously be way fucking better. But that's not a that's not a show. That's a movie. So I'm gonna stick with my words. This is gonna be the best we thing we watch. We got Kuga on here. the fucking wheel. What? Then we got Kuga on the wheel out of nowhere. Fuck, like fuck off. No, you know what? No, this show's better <laughs> better than Kuga. Fuck you. This show's fucking great. It's fine to be wrong. You're yeah. It's, it's fine, fine to be. be it's wrong, fine Jay. to be you, AJ. It's fine to be wrong, Jay. I know that you it's, need to keep it's, telling. It's fine your, to be wrong, Jay. Yes, keep telling yourself. It's fine that, to be AJ. wrong, Jay. <laughs> It's fine to be wrong, Jay. You're, it's okay. I know you're wrong, AJ. Don't make me bring. Don't make me bring it up again. Bring up what? No, no, it's okay. What? <laughs> That's okay. What? It's okay. What? It's okay. It's not your fault. I, I'm keeping tally. Don't worry. Uh, was was that all of them or? I don't know. I didn't really. Uh, I I figured we were going to keep that bit going, but I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, is that, is that your final thoughts? No. You're still wrong. Um, no, uh, absolutely everything that I was hoping the show would end up being, it ended up exceeding my expectations. Every single tiny fucking frame and minute of this show was an absolute fucking riot. And I am, I am so glad that I finally got to watch this show. And I, I think it's going to be a very long time before I see something that is about on par or better in terms of my, in terms of personal enjoyment. I'm just like, that's like setting, I, you know what? You know how we usually jinx ourselves for something bad. That's setting us up for like something really fucking good. I hope. I mean, like I, it's going to be, it's going to be a fucking like mountain climb, but I'm expecting something really good. Unless it's like something that like I've literally, unless again, unless we pull a fucking Vanny Knights out of our ass again. Oh my God. Which, Please God. I mean, Angel Rosetta is there, so yeah. Have, I have no like, idea what that is. I don't have any idea what the hell that is either. But like, I mean, to be fair, unless we get like, I don't want to jinx. I don't want to jinx myself by setting expectations. That, unless we get something like fucking Zayram next week, I don't think we're gonna get anything nearly as good as this show was for a very long time on the wheel. Isn't Zayram a movie? It is a movie. It, it is on the wheel. You know that. Yes, but that's that's what I'm saying. Is like. Picking something randomly off the that I can think of that's probably on the wheel, like unless we get like that next week, I don't think we're gonna have a, as nearly as good of a show, or nearly as enjoyable as a show in quite some time. I know I'm I know, I'm setting us up for for failure. I know I and you know what? After this, I feel like I feel I, like we've earned a little bit of goodwill. I think I think I feel confident with my words. I, I feel confident when I say that. I feel like I want you to be wrong because I want to see just how much better this year can get. You know what? I agree with you. I, I hope in turn, I hope, I hope everything this year is about as equal in terms of quality, even though I know that's not possible, but I hope next week is ghost. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck you. But no, I, I know like we, We've set ourselves up for it now, and it, we know what's going to happen next. We've we've fucking done this bit how many times now? I don't even know. But so next week is fucking Zebra Man or some shit. Well, that's also Takashi Miike. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, I hope so then. So, yeah. So that means we're not going to get it. 
<laughs> but no, but no. Um, ah, uh, sorry, I had something stuck in my teeth. But no, I think just in general, this is probably going to be. This is one of my new favorite shows. I, I, and I feel confident saying that, at least in regards to our content, it's going to be a while since we watch till we watch something nearly as good as this. <laughs> On every every single level, I I don't We're, think there's a single like objectively bad thing that I could say happens in this show. Well, besides Toko. Well. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say she's objectively I mean, she's not bad. bad. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say she's like shit. No. But if she if she went away, I would not miss her. Not necessarily. It's one of those things, it's one of those things where it's like it's not bad, but if she went away, I wouldn't miss her. I wouldn't. Or fucking <laughs> I would uh, his show his episodes were shit, mate. Those were fucking bad. They were so boring. Uh, they were they were like the worst fucking episodes. How do you have the worst episode twice? Um I know, right? Uh actually three times thought. if you count the random one where like, oh, third got brain damage, so now uh Kata, you need to go talk to all your fra- fucking sidekicks again. Oh god, yeah. That one was that one was um, really fucking bad. Mm. So my final thoughts. Uh, Jay, shit. He's dumb and gay and smelly. Uh, show's awful. Uh, I'd rather watch Ghost. Actually, you know, I, I, don't even say, I wouldn't even say that jokingly. I would kill myself. Um, no, uh, this show's great. This show is fantastic. I love this show. I would say there are episodes that are definitely skip-worthy. Very much skip-worthy. That I kind of got bored with. But I kind of said this to Jay the other night when I was starting to watch the show more and more. Um, the more I watched this show, while there are points where it started kind of going like, eh, you're starting to lose me a little bit. It would always come right back with like, well, okay, you got my attention. Like right away, it would always get my attention back with something with some, it, it could be just a scene. It could be a, sh- it could be an entire episode. And this show is just great. I would say it's again, I would say it's probably the best thing we've seen this year. Uh, next to Don Brothers, because uh, yeah, I can't I can't forget Don Brothers. But like I would say, it's the best thing we've seen this year so far. If we get something better this year, I mean, I would be shocked, honestly. Um, again, that's how that's when uh, we get like fucking I don't know some crazy shit. Uh, mm. But I I legitimately like the show. I lo- I like I like most mostly everything about it. Again, there's some things here and there. That are, mm, I, you know what? I, I I guess we'll say our our favorite word. There are some things here that are quibbles, mm. little quibbles, little quibbles, tiny little, little quibble, but a little bit of little, little, little quibble. But overall, there's nothing in this show that I can say is legitimately like bad, bad. There's boring, but bad, bad. Nah, there's nothing I can say that's bad, bad. I would say legitimately go watch it. It is really fun. Honestly, the only thing that I don't really like care for again is just the the kikai guy i just don't i don't really care for his episodes but those are two episodes out of like what 45 45. so and and you know what even even it being 45 wasn't too bad i honestly didn't mind it being that long no well actually no technically since there was like what four double episodes i guess it's more like 50 something well there were like two or three double length episodes but so i guess 47 48 or so but still under 50 yeah so it's not too bad if you're if you're okay with under 50 but not over 50 uh you're ageist by the way um it's whatever i i i like this show i would say definitely go watch it um i do want to say i actually do want to get those cell phones now i do i really want it at the very least either zero one or seven and i've i've looked i can't find anyone and that hasn't are you serious yeah I will send you some links for them. The uh, the DX ones. Uh, do you know they actually have one for fourth too? It's weird. It's very like, actually. For... Yeah, that's the weird thing is like they explicitly say there's seven of them, but like only three of them are in the actual show. They two, three of them are already dead, and one of them is basically already dead. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird that they did that. <laughs> it's it's quite uh, interesting that they would die. Mm. Yeah, they're just like not for... even like that they would die. It's like the fact that they were basically non characters. There is one for where is it? There's one for third. If I could find seven somewhere, 
Because there, there, there's quite a few. Uh, yeah, Phone Braver. Uh, da, 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 da. I, I know we're doing this right before we do the wheel. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> if you're okay. hearing this. It's okay. No, not you. This is, this, is the, uh, this is the tangent part of the episode, even though we've already had the tangent part of the episode. There's zero one, and I know that fourth has... Is that fourth? No. It's either she has one... Or she has a model kit. Because they do make model kits. They did make... Oh, yeah, there she is. It's a model kit of Neat. fourth. So if you want a model kit of fourth... Oh, it's one of those like tiny ones. It's like kind of babyish. Oh, uh, one of the mini um, plus. Yeah, okay. I mean, if you if I mean, if you like fourth, I mean, it's there. Oh, yeah. I really like this non-character. Uh, I really, I really loved Goku. that one episode of fourth where she was in a fucking desk drawer and did nothing. <laughs> But she went uwu mabubu at the end. I guess that's true. And died. Everyone loves it when she goes ooh. She just fucking dies. Um, yeah, that's so that's, that's her signature thing is going uwu mabubu and then dying. <laughs> she does it in every episode, dude. Uh, every episode, she she's like Kenny from South Park. Ah, uh, damn it! I was just episode. about to say it. <laughs> oh my god, they killed so, fourth. You bastard! <laughs> you bastard! She's got to do that in the robot voice now. Uh, all right, so. Wheel time, Jay. Yes. I haven't done this in a while. No. But wheel time. We haven't. I hope it's something good. I hope that AJ gets hit by a flying ice cream truck. <laughs> we don't have ice cream trucks down here. They all melt. What a shame. You guys don't know. You guys, you guys don't get to know the fun joy of uh, getting one of those fucked up Powerpuff Girl popsicles. We have we have them in stores. But it's not. It's not the same. It is yeah, not it is. the same if you're it's not getting it from some cream. dude on a truck. It's an ice cream. It doesn't look, change it, look, getting it from a look, fucking truck. Get, going into the fucking store and buying it, it don't hit. It hit different. As, don't as make the me, Zoomies don't make say, me make you. It hit different. <laughs> don't make me make you watch that fucking uh, what is it? Little Girl Idol show with fucking laser from X Aid. Uh, oh no, it's not. It's not laser. It's snipe. snipe. Yeah. Why is he in that? He needed a paycheck, I guess. Wasn't he also in trouble for beating somebody? I don't think so. Don't yeah, think he, not... he, was in, he was in trouble for like hitting a chick in a nightclub or something, wasn't he? Not that comes to mind. I swear I remember. Because th- I know Realma, obviously, he, uh, he didn't know no things. I, um, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure he might have, but I, I don't think it really like stuck in my mind. I'm not going to say he didn't, but I'm not going to also say that like he definitely didn't because I don't remember and either, I don't really uh, care enough. You will neither confirm nor deny that he smacked a hooker? I mean, no, because he's not Duke, so. Did Duke smack a hooker? I'm pretty, oh, yeah, Duke, yeah. yeah no, no, he, Duke, he's, uh... He smacked a... He's, he punched a bitch, and then uh, he did some other no-no stuff, too. That's fair. Oh, no, Lupat! No, we're not... Fuck we're not. off! <laughs> Could you fucking imagine? Dude, I was at a Toku panel over the weekend at Anime Boston. Some dude said fuck. I don't oh, remember. Go for if it. He, go for it. I don't think he said like to start with Lupat, but he was talking about how fucking good that show was. I'm like, bruh, did we watch the same fucking show? Bro. Oh my God. Like that. You, you guys in the discord server saw me fucking ranting about it. And, uh, I know at least one other person was there at that panel. I don't know if anybody else was there. But, uh, yeah, fucking dog shit panel. Uh, dis- <laughs> the, the dude fucking opened up the panel about explaining what tokusatsu was by talking about fucking internet memes and then merch. And then No, he, he did it. What? I swear to God. He started talking Holy about fucking fuck. toku Twitter memes by shit playing the fucking Today is Friday in California bit and then talking <sighs> about fucking Dan Kuroto without oh explaining anything about what it is. Or explaining what tokusatsu was in general. And he starts talking about the fucking toys and explaining all the toy differences. It takes him halfway through the fucking panel to even start beginning to remotely describe what the hell tokusatsu is or what shows are. And like, honestly, not to put not to put him on the spot, mostly because I don't remember his name and I feel, I feel bad if you're listening. I was talking with somebody else from a different podcast. Uh, and 
Too, I'll be honest. No, he was a cool guy. We were talking at a different panel, and uh, I really enjoyed him. And we had a we had a little conversation about the uh, the Power Rangers anniversary, which is actually coming up soon. Um, yeah, and we're I, doing I, that. I kind of have my uh, my opinions on that reverse to tie in a little bit after we uh, we had a little conversation about that. I'm feeling a little bit more uh, invested in checking that out. But uh, you are just to tie in a little bit after the con- you I, are. I, 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 let me. Fucking explain, Dick. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that shit again. You already did that once. You had your quota. No, like we we were talking about. Like I was kind of talking about some of my gripes I had with it, and then uh, the way he kind of explained his own thoughts, and I was like, yeah, I didn't really think about that that way. So I think that was really interesting. So I'm I'm willing to give it more of a shot now. But uh, I I could tell that oh, he also was like fucking miserable watching that panel. He's like, this guy had no. He at, he at one point goes up and asks him about the uh, the Chayo lawsuit with Ultraman, and the fucking dude doing the panel had no idea what he was talking about. He's like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what you're talking about. The dude had to explain to him what it was, and he's like, yeah, I don't understand. I don't have any opinion on that. I'm like, oh, my God. I, I wanted to die. I, oh, want, so I next, so next year wanted to Boston? die. You know what? I'm trying. I'll do it. Fuck I'm you. legitimately... I am trying to get a panel. I am trying to get a panel set up for next year. You, you, you get that panel happening. I will fucking be there, and I will, I will be. I'll be like Joe Pilato, just being like, and all of you who like fucking Saber are I stupid. Know Massachusetts, interesting. Oh no wonder he's dead. <laughs> You're right. He is dead. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, he was Ang- He was a uh, G- Greymon, I think. I don't remember. I don't. Watch Digimon. Metal Greymon. He was. There you go. I don't. I don't watch Digis. Men's. That's because you have I, no taste. I don't even watch Power pa- 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 Rangers. Don't watch fucking Pokemon either. They're all. They're all shit. Well, Pokemon sucks. They're all shit to me. Anyways, <laughs> everyone knows you okay. Watch this where it's at. <laughs> There's somebody out there who believes that. Um, <laughs> uh, you okay, no, no, watch like, sisters. It's our time to shine. Shut the. <laughs> No, dude, if you, you get a fucking Toku panel going at I Am A Boston, I'll be there and I'll be, like, yelling at people and throwing my drinks at them. So that'd be uh, great. You're going to get kicked out. All right, fine. I'll throw my empty bottles at them. Uh, it's, it's kind of a pass. All right. Well, look, I'll, I'll be there and I'll be like, all y'all suck. You're all shit. I'm going to tell you about real tokusatsu. Now turn your page to page 69 where we talk about fucking Vanny Nights. I'm gonna print. I'm gonna print a book at work and hand it off to everybody in the audience, and I'm gonna make them fucking read the book. <laughs> Let me tell you all about fucking Vanny Nights, right? This motherfucker got eaten, <laughs> and we still don't know what the ending is. This stupid motherfucker turned into a vampire. I don't know what that shit was about, but it was cool. <laughs> yeah, all watch Maji Ranger. Well, this is Maji Ranger if it was good. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh... All right. Uh, well, I, the wheel stopped a while ago. Okay, so so you did you did your check. You made sure this has subs before you you fuck. Okay, yeah, it's on YouTube. So that means either it's gonna be really good. It's in oh, English. So that means this is gonna be some weird fucking like Korean shit, isn't it? I think it also could be. Power it's Rangers. probably gonna be some weird Korean shit. It's, it's probably, probably it not be gonna be Power Rangers. Rangers. I if it's Beetleborgs, I'm killing myself. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm dead. Uh, <laughs> are we just fucking talking about that. <laughs> it's a, uh, It's uh, all of it is on this channel. At least I assume because it's all like what twelve. Well, episodes? I'm sure we'll so, yeah, find out when episodes. we get no. to like the last episode that's there, and there's a fucking preview for another episode. Hold on, let me see. Rosetta, Rosetta Stone. Angel. Weren't we just talking about this like twenty minutes ago? <laughs> this we were. I was like Rosetta the Rosetta fucking. Why does this? Fucking why dog. does this keep happening? Why do we keep like randomly because... bringing up? Sh- <laughs> oh, it is oh, only thirteen God. episodes, so we can all watch it. It's thirteen episodes, and they're all subbed, uh, allegedly, on, on this channel. Hold on, I'm double checking. Yes, they are, but it's an. Is that Cake Boss? Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, shit. It's Cake Boss. All right. Hey. We're, we're, I just saw him for like half a second. I was like, hey, yo. Now. All right. Just watch. This is going to be like some bullshit. What, what is this? Is this porn? <laughs> I was, I was going to say it wouldn't be on YouTube then, but I've definitely seen porn on YouTube, so. 
I have too. Is this is this porn? Yeah, it's right, Giga. Not not Rosetta. It's just something else that I found there. Uh, which, by the way, we also got a um, a suggestion on the wheel that literally just says "Do everything by Giga." Nice suggestion, asshole. So, <laughs> what is done by Giga? Uh, That's partially uh, not porn. They did some show called like Di- Dinosaur or something <laughs> it, like that. It's like a fucking. <laughs> they did. They Wecker. might have. They did like a fucking Cure Uja ripoff. <laughs> it's- <laughs> Which exactly. <one? laughs> They've been doing Kyo Ryuji ripoffs since fucking Ryu Soldier. <laughs> well, uh, 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 schizo ranting aside, um, we have finally finished Ktai Seven. Uh, Rosetta the Masked Angel is going to be so much better than it, and uh, Jay's going to eat his words. Uh. If somehow this get if if this is somehow better than Master if this is somehow better than Ktai Seven I will fucking like I cry. I don't believe it's gonna happen <laughs> I'm gonna I'm sticking my gun I'm sticking with my guns it's, on that one somehow somehow uh, it explains the ending of Vanny Nights you know what maybe it will maybe it actually will well ladies and gentlemen who am I fucking kidding gentlemen uh. That's it. Show's over. Fuck. Whatever. Oh, by the way, go listen to the opening of this. Wait a second. I know at least one woman that watches this show, allegedly, if Artsy still watches this show. Oh, right. Actually, to be fair, I did look at our analytics the other day. Uh, We have 12% female who, like, listen to us. My God, that means there are 12% of how many people watch this that want to have sex with Phil. Actually, wait, no. No, that's being generous. Do, do you want me to? Do, do, I was I was gonna say um, that number does kind of go down once we get to the fill well, episode. I mean, so. well, we all know that. We all we we <laughs> that, that's that's saying the quiet part out loud there. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we have more female listeners when it's just like you and I. I can't like believe I'm fucking Fujo bait. I know. Unfortunately. I. I I think that fe- I think that feels worse than being like being called a racist or whatever on Twitter is being Fujo bait. I think you know what I think. I'll think. I, mean, I think I'll take Twitter hating me over that. I mean, next week is Pride or not? Next yeah, week. next week, week month, the month so of like, June is next week. <laughs> it's oh, it's, it's in June. June that doesn't yeah. mean. You think I fucking? Keep I don't up keep up shit? with this shit, and even I know that. I don't give a fuck about when Pride, Pride Month is. Whenever Pride I Month is bullshit. It's run by corporations now. It's a, it's a whole soulless, whole, soulless husk that only exists to sell merchandise. <laughs> uh, so in June, we'll be doing Come Rider O's again. Yeah, we will. We'll see. Oh uh, no, we have to get something even gayer. The fuck is it that's gayer than O's? <sighs> There's got to be something. Can we? Do, we can't do Hibiki. Because we already did Hibiki, and that's that's we already that's did. pretty gay. That is pretty gay. Well, what's, what could be gayer than O's though that we can think of? I mean, maybe the maybe the next. The yeah. next is pretty fucking gay. Yeah, it's pretty gay. It's pretty. There's a lot of man it. ass in that movie. They're they're. Real. Oh, you know what? We'll do another. <laughs> <Maybe girl. we're laughs> I think I think flowers. Uh, by the is way, gay, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. By the way, show's over. Yeah, we're just we're just uh, fucking rambling like usual. But- All right. Well, bye.